today on Doomed. New York's hottest club is the New York Young Republican Club's annual gala. It's got everything. Pizzagate Jack, Crossfoot Congresswoman, European fascists, man who wears five layers of clothes indoors, the entire staff of Newsweek, and much, much more. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's episode of Doomed with Matt Binder. I am your host, well, I just mentioned it, Matt Binder, and joining me today are the two special agents who infiltrated this this annual gala of gathering far right wingers let me pull us all up on the feed here uh and i can welcome to the show my guests friend of the show michael edison hayden he is a southern poverty law center senior investigative reporter and spokesperson and joining me for the first time is SPLC Senior Research Analyst, Hannah Gaze. Michael, Hannah, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Michael? Yeah, how's it going, man? <laughs> just just checking to make sure you're there, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, welcome. I'm here. I'm here. I wanted I want to fit, let the intro finish. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, uh, had, to, had to do it. Had to do it. It seemed like it fit. <laughs> um, Happy you know, holidays, this... everybody. Yeah, yeah. What a what a wonderful time of the year. Uh, how was how was how was New York City? Was the was the, the 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 Rockefeller Center tree glowing with Christmas lights? Were the fascists uh, <laughs> out? In- yeah, there, there, there was a nice Christmas vibe uh, outside on the way as well uh, on the way there. And I didn't want to like blow. I would normally I would have tweeted stuff like this. There was a whole crowd of. Uh, anti anti grooming activists outside of the uh, um, New York City Public Library that I photographed. So I need to get ah. those out there, but I've, I, I've I've already reached out to somebody who's helped me kind of ID who they are. But yeah, little bit of uh, you know weird radical right conspiracy stuff. Little bit of tree, uh, you know, on the whole, very nice weekend. Now, uh, yeah, you know that, that. No, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the classic uh, holiday anti-grooming gathering. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they, I think they have a, a specific elf on the shelf for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you two, for people who don't know, the two of you, uh, for a special report for uh, SPLC, you you both, Agent Hannah, Agent Michael, you both went undercover and got into this this exclusive event. Um, can you can, uh, can can you break down how how this happened? If you can't, I, I understand think, that. <laughs> well, I, I think the first I think the first thing that we have to clarify is that we did not inf- infiltrate and we did not go undercover. Um, I registered under <laughs> the indecipherable name Mike Hayden is how I registered for this event. And uh, I walked like... in and I took the Mike Hayden name tag and I just went downstairs and they just just did such a poor job vetting this Are thing. Are you serious? I never, yeah, yeah you... that's true. That's true. I didn't pretend to be someone I wasn't. Is, I was, is it because uh, you I was didn't Mike use... Hayden. Is it because you didn't use your middle name too? It was like a Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ben Kenobi type thing. They couldn't tell who you were because you weren't using. <laughs> yeah, I used the yeah, name that I used around my friends, email. that's it. He's, he's leaving out the beautiful email that he gave them. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I, I, no, no, I, I just like, um, when they asked for an email, I didn't want to give like, you know, my, my email, my work email address, obviously, because that's Southern, I didn't want to throw a Southern Poverty Law Center at that, but I didn't want to, you know, give them a fake name or something. So I didn't do that. Um, and I gave him my Gmail. I didn't want to give him my Gmail thing, which is just my name, and I didn't want to do that. So uh, I gave him a, um, a an email that was like MH Attorney, nineteen sixty eight. That's like the extent. Uh, I just didn't want to. I didn't want my email address to be the thing that tells them like, no, we can't let him. But um, they couldn't. I I I also uh, you know like um, George Wash. Is it George Washington? I cannot tell a lie. Uh, and I just uh, I was Mike Hayden. That's it. And then, and then we didn't, we didn't lie to anybody inside the, in the place who we were. 
In fact, someone uh, cornered us, someone named Ali, her name was, started asking us questions. So we, because we look young uh, in this group, there's a young Republican club, but everybody looks like they're, um, uh, you know, everybody looks like they're like, you know, 50 to, to 70. Um, you know, they cornered us. They wanted to know a little bit about us. And it seems like they were trying to recruit us a little bit um, to becoming full-time members. And I asked her, like, what do you do? And I just said, um, we're journalists. And then in the space where you explain where you work for, we didn't say anything. I was just like, thank you very much. <laughs> and we just walked away. Nobody, nobody asked, hey, hey, who are these guys that look very suspiciously like the people who are reporting on, on uh, the figures we've invited as special guests like literally every day? Not, never happened. Just terrible betting. No. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even check tickets. So we, when we walked in, um, uh, so I, I used my first and middle name um, because I think, unlike Mike Hayden, uh, there are very, there's approximately maybe one Hannah Gaze, and that's me. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there's a few more Hannah Johnsons. Um, but they didn't even, uh, the email address I, used is connected i mean i i mean it, it has some personal identifying information the year i was born and they still didn't figure that out um it's an important thing for everybody to know especially all of the republicans and white nationalists who are listening to this if a hannah and mike hayden uh <laughs> sign up for your event anytime in the future it is not us this it's is definitely totally not fine. Up. You ever see? I think you it's, should leave. You ever uh, the scene? I think you should leave. I've been doing this. Sorry to Hannah. Sorry for like days. But you see the thing where like where where, where Jim Robinson was like they show up and they're like he's he, the excuse he gives is that the the babysitter like the babysitter uh, just ran over some people at a hit and run and he's like this is fine. This is fine. This is totally fine. Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. But this is fine. It's just like. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, it's totally we meant we meant to have SPLC to come. Yeah, they're there, they're there but this is fine. Like that's uh, sorry, the, the end. I'm done. I'm not doing that. <laughs> we were actually guests of honor. Um, they just didn't know that we were guests of honor. It's just they they felt that in their bones. They wanted did, did us. They... They, they wanted us there until they figured out who we were, and then immediately wanted us gone. So that's. Oh, you that's mean you weren't? Exactly. You weren't? You weren't there to accept the what? What? What's the CIA award they give there? What? What is that one? <laughs> Oh, uh, Alan Dulles like one? Yeah, Alan Dulles. So normal oh, shit, right? For like rooting out communists or whatever. <laughs> you, you guys weren't there to accept that? Uh, no, yeah. I well, didn't, didn't manage to get that. That was all Jack, actually. Got to, you know. So let's I actually... really thought we were in the running. I mean... <laughs> Hey, you never know. Maybe next time. There's always next time. For people who don't know, That's could true. you just break down, before we get into the party, the party, the, the, the annual the gala, the gala itself. Um, what is the New York Young Republicans Club? So it is one of the oldest groups uh, of this kind, I think, in the United States that uh, uh, helps bring together Republican activists, um, mostly from the state of New York. Uh, there were certainly some out-of-state visitors uh, at this particular gathering, which we can get to later. Um, but... As a general rule, I mean, they do a lot of these kinds of events, uh, basically just various gatherings, talks, et cetera. Um, throughout, I mean, I think from what I can tell throughout its history, I mean, it's had a, it's had a fair number of prominent figures attached to it, uh, mostly on the right. And, you know, it's recently taken a little bit of a hard right turn, I think is pretty safe to say. Um, given the number of uh, particular figures that were there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's the room, the vibe, the, the vibe of that night was very, very pro-Trump. Uh, obviously with Donald Trump Jr. there, that would be expected. Um, but I think a lot of talk about loyalty and uh, the importance of staying loyal to Donald Trump uh, be thanking people at one point uh, for staying loyal to Donald Trump and not throwing him under the bus. Um, yeah, but it is, it, it is basically one of these 
right wing groups within New York uh, that has attracted a variety of figures on the right and far right. So, right. So, so, so the, 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 for New Yorkers to understand, for like a very simple sense, if anybody remembers George Pataki, do you remember George Pataki? He was like, I do, uh, yes. yeah, I'm showing my age here, but but this would be, um, this is like. Uh, it's not George Pataki's party anymore, right, in New York. And Donald Trump is from New York, and this is really um, a sort of post-Trump presidency uh, in the model of Trumpism, New York Re Young Republicans Party. Right. Young, young. I, I mean, I guess because it's been around for so long, young, like when, like maybe when they first started it, they were young and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but it seems like the main criteria here is not that you're young it seems to be something else uh mm. and it seems to be mm. uh, how far you're willing to go uh in a particular in a particular way how hard well i think they're willing to be. their membership i think it does have uh restrictions on age um whether or not that's necessarily enforced i'm not really sure <laughs> <laughs> right. They probably enforce it just like they enforce who enters the the gala. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> uh, so so let's talk about this night. So who who was in attendance? Give me a who's who. Like we're we're on like Access Hollywood and <laughs> who was coming down the red carpet at the New York Republican Young Republican Gala. So on the on the um Trump world you know, on, on the main, like the kind of sort of big Trump world players, you have uh, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani or what's left of him, uh, Steve Bannon. Um, Steve Bannon was there. Uh, you, Roger Stone was supposed to be there. We have a theory. Uh, we did not see him. Uh -huh. We have a theory that perhaps Steve Bannon's presence may have, because um, we've heard that they don't like each other, uh, may have sent one, may, made it a, either or he stays or I stay. Type thing. That's our that's our working theory. One of the one one of the um, delightful young Republicans can come and correct me on that one. Um, you had uh, Bumble Jack Pazovic, who I have done an entire doomed episode with you talking about uh, Bumble Jack and his history. Yes, I um, know. Yeah, and uh, you know that he was a, he was a main stage speaker. He was a he was like a big deal, a uh, big part of this. Um, he was he was one of the first two um, uh, hype speakers. Him and Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, then you had figures like James O'Keefe of Project Veritas, fresh out of uh, some legal uh, entanglements he's been he's been dealing with recently. Uh, you have figures like uh, what um, uh, Ron Coleman. Does anybody know Ron Coleman? Show of hands. Is Not that, young. Is that is that the is that the the, the lawyer that a lot of these guys go with? Uh, is yeah, yeah, person, yeah, yeah. He was, this is the person yeah, that represents he, libs of TikTok, right? He's yeah. Well, he 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 seems to represent any any kind of hard right, uh, you know, neo fascist uh, anybody. In, and and um, kind of he's also a poster. He's kind of he's like a, he he's he's got a he's got a a very boomery vibe on on Twitter. He's kind of like around the area of any anytime there anyone's there. Anytime SPLC publishes something and you see them kind of com commiserating and being like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're just, you know, they're they're fake news and they're fake org and nobody takes them seriously. Discredited also SPLC and he's in there saying, well, if they go too far, we're gonna sue him and all that. That's Ron Coleman. He's always around. You can just look him up on Twitter. He's he's around. He's Ron Coleman. Oh, I just uh, I, I actually can't look he, him up. He blocked me. Yeah, yeah he blocked me too. I, I, I blocked say. him actually. <laughs> always oh, block. Right. Always block first because then you can kind of also peek under the block and sort of see. If you I don't do it. that. I don't do that. You know I that. Do. I do. Uh, so uh, Coleman, uh, Matthew Tiermond. Now, Matthew Tiermond's a really interesting guy. We should spend some time talking about him. Sorry, my cat. Uh, Matthew Tiermond, who is a Project Veritas operative, who is like involved in a number of different uh, foreign uh, kind of uh, fashy uh, campaigns, including the campaign to try to overturn the Brazilian elections or sort of... Uh, uh -huh. Um, kind of do scenario boy steal in Brazil. Yeah, exactly. He's doing that, but he was also uh, in the room with Stefan Molyneux and Jack Posobiec, kind of orchestrating their or helping, uh, you know, them or whatever they were while they did their uh, little uh, BS after the the uh, 
the march in Poland where people chanted white power and all that. I've done some little reporting on that. Matthew Chirman just happens to be there. Um, he's done work for the Polish hard right government there. He's connected to a number of um, European ultranationalists uh, in, a, in a colloquial sense, fascist politicians. Uh, he was the guy who kind of introduced the European figures who were there. I'll let Hannah mention that, talked about the, those figures. But Tierman kind of introduced them. And he's like, you guys all need to get together and hang out. He's sort of bringing together all these people. And interesting thing about Tierman also, like, again, I don't want to go off the rails talking about this one political operative. But one thing that is compelling about Tierman to me is that you may not know his name. Um, people don't really think of him as like a big player necessarily. He appears from time to time in articles about things. But he's sitting there in the main table. Table four was like right in front of the stage with Bannon and Giuliani. Um, and that tells you that this guy is a pretty well-connected fellow. Uh, one other person I've mentioned, of course, is Raheem Kassam. Uh, if you're familiar with Raheem Kassam, he is kind of this uh, oh, sleazy, I guess what the word is, kind of British uh, fella who is involved in pushing disinfo. He used to work for Breitbart UK. There's a lot of questions about why he no longer does that. Um, he's He was there. He was there. He's, he's a contributor to Newsweek, too. He pushed a lot of uh, 2020 election disinfo. Uh, Ashley St. Clair is a kind of a, a lower tier, kind of C-level uh, social media influencer. She was there. Anybody familiar with Libby Emmons? Uh, Libby Emmons. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you know oh wait, <laughs> Ashley Saint. I remember. Yeah. I know Ashley. I know Ashley Saint Clair because I called. I said that she wrote an anti-trans children's book, and she came at me going, "How dare you call it anti-trans? Like completely legit. Yeah, How that. dare you call it anti-trans?" And then I looked uh, at her, I looked at her Twitter history, and like six months earlier, she was uh, hawking, throwing around a Daily Mail article that she gave an interview for, where it says, "Meet the meet the activist who wrote the anti-trans children's book," and she was sharing that. <laughs> she was, uh, she was with Jack Pizobic on January fifth, uh, on the eve of the insurrection. Kind of, they were kind of hanging out together. Um, uh, bottom text. There you go. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So Ashley St. Clair. Um, uh, trying to think of some of the other. Yeah, Libby Evans is the editor of Post Malone. She's like really like a kind of like this try hard person who is who is just recently kind of ingratiated the, herself to them. She has uh, the editing ability of maybe like somebody who runs a high school newspaper. So therefore, she's elevated to like the top editor of this. <laughs> Of this world. I, um, I, I'm going to stop you there and just say that I think that's kind of insulting to people who run high school newspapers. Okay, that's true. <laughs> that that's true. That that's true. That's true. There are definitely high school um, editors who can do a much better job than Libby can. But uh, nevertheless, she um, has kind of just made herself, made her way into this world somehow. And who who else? Any anybody else that I'm missing? I'll, then I want to turn over to Hannah. I'll Hannah, let Hannah talk about the one. This, this, are there, there must be some, some American people. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, and then the politicians. Are, yeah. You talk about the politicians. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've done, Should I, I go? Know. Yeah. You don't want to talk about the politicians? No, no, no. You go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, there was a pretty heavy European contingent there, which is quite interesting. Um, so representatives, particularly from Alternative uh, for Germany, which is a far-right ultranationalist party, as you guessed, in Germany, um, at whose, one of whose former MPs was most recently arrested in an attempted coup plot, bottled after January 6th. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one yeah, that was all over the news like a couple of weeks ago, right? Where it was like there was some like, yeah, I think it was like yeah. a couple of days ago, days ago, days, days ago, right? Before this event. The, the days yeah. and Q weeks. Q and on, Q and on in Germany, Q and on right. in Germany. That's right. Where we keep exporting the best stuff to the rest of the world. Right. That's the, uh, that's yeah. what we USA USA. <laughs> <laughs> Soft power, man. That's Whatever the call. opposite of a woke mind virus, uh, that, oh. that is what we're exploiting now. Can I, can I just say, uh, yeah. after Elon Musk said, he keeps tweeting it, woke mind virus. And I had to, like, yeah. I kept reading it, like, in my head. And, like, I was like, wait, this this feels like something I need to, like, say out loud. 
and I said the words for the first time just like yesterday out loud, woke mind virus, and I immediately felt like a huge fucking loser. Like it sounds like the yeah, lamest, it's a, it's a, most it's a, cornball thing you could ever say. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a it's a weird fucking thing to say. It's it's a weird fucking thing to say, and um, and Elon keeps losing money, so. Yeah, I, yeah. Let him say. Could, it. could we? Could we? I, he also... he can get us. He can let the woke mind virus get all over the place or whatever. I don't know. Maybe people. I'm fighting on behalf of the time. virus. I am fighting on behalf of the virus. I am. That's right. I, I I am with the virus. I'm an anti-vaxer for the woke mind virus. I think. Yeah, I'm like should, I'm like like the COVID denialist, uh, uh, circa circa spring uh, 2020, except with the woke mind virus. Right. Right. Precisely. Super, super spreader. <laughs> Oh, by by the way, it seems like unless, unless someone is pretending to be them, it seems like uh, the real Ashley St. Clair and the real Raheem Kassam are in the YouTube live chat right now. Let's uh, go. Let's go. Let's yeah. Go. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. So before we get to the politicians, if Ashley is there, I just want to briefly read a tweet that she sent um, about the fact that we were at this event. Uh, I just want to I, judge for yourself. I think if this is maybe a good thing to post. Um, here, I'll just read it. From December 11th, from Ash Ashley St. Clair, the left and SPLC crashed our New York Young Republican gala, calling it a dangerous gathering of racists. I'm just glad they did not get the pics of all of us putting on our white hoods for the after party. There you go. Nice tweet. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 we're we're recording so, yeah. all. They're talking about. They're talking about defamation. And I mean, <laughs> the uh, the video oh. goes up okay. online afterwards. So feel free to view it and download it. You don't have to screen record. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I mean, wait, is, what 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 is, what is the de what is the defamation? I don't know. Do they want to call in and, and ask? I mean, uh, you could DM me the uh, your your Skype names, and I'll pull you guys up on the call if you want to call in. Uh, feel free. Um, you got my my uh, Twitter handle is at Matt Binder. DM me, please. Um, all right, let's let's keep going unless they do that. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So the entire so. Okay, so Oh, sorry. Sorry. No. So, so Newsweek was was there too, correct? I mean, that to me was like a big yeah. standout. The fact that there were so many Newsweek staffers. I mean, we all know Newsweek now. No, they're not has Newsweek gone... staffers. No, 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 not Newsweek staffers. Okay. So you got one Newsweek staffer. That's that's Josh Hammer, who is the opinion editor of Newsweek. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of people that he's just kind of uh, given bylines to. Um, and he sort of he has turned uh, Newsweek opinion into a kind of place where people who are in this radical right, this kind of uh, pro-Trump right uh, swamp can get bylines because these are not people who um, have a lot of they, they don't have their like hands really on things that are considered to be mainstream. Right. So what is left of Newsweek's uh, name recognition is very valuable to somebody. Uh, who like Jack Pozobic, for example, who works for like what human events and post millennial like stuff, stuff the stuff that if you go if you like go to a little league game and you're just like, hey, uh, my cousin writes for human events, they'll be like, what? Like, you know, nobody knows what that is. No one knows what human events is, right? So if you say, oh, I, he writes, he he just wrote a column for Newsweek, um, it sounds nice. So uh, Hammer has been sort of handing out those to um, people in this circle since May 2021 when he got that position. Um, got a lot of questions about how he got the position, which is, uh, includes, uh, you know, a question that I asked him before, um, something, but we can talk about that in a bit, but yes, Newsweek was involved or what's left of it. And, um, yeah, a lot of people have been asking about that particular part of it. Yeah. And, and let's, let's, let's talk about, there's a, there's an amazing story in the piece, which by the way, is in the description of the video will be posted on the description of the podcast. Everyone should go check out the piece um, where you were talking with the opinion editor of Newsweek. And I just why don't you why, why, don't, why, why am I going to recall it? You, you guys lived it 
Tell me what happened there, because that was that's. A, I think that might be one of my favorite moments, if not if not well, the stand out for me. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do this instead? And I don't want to like it's your show. I hate to like get no, things, you, like, no. Go like, ahead. I, I don't want. I don't want to. Okay. So, but we know each other well, so it's just. I'll just tell you st like strategically, kind of how we handled it until we get to that moment, so that way you can understand how we got there. Because I think like it just. So when we got inside the, the the venue, we were both a little surprised about how easy it was. We've read, I think we, Hannah, I think we probably thought it would be like 50-50 chance we would be, you know, just booted at the door as soon as we showed up. Is that correct? 50-40, honestly. If okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought there would be some vetting. <laughs> I thought there would yeah. be some vetting. <laughs> and like, you know, maybe like all in all. Like, you know, just like, hey, that looks like the guy who's reporting negatively, you know, or, 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 or they perceive to be negatively on us. Um, I thought there'd be something. Anyway, didn't happen. So we went down to the um, we went down to the cocktail area uh, down there. And, uh, you know, I told Hannah, listen, um, you know, I'm going to take some photographs of some folks and stuff like that. Just just hang tight, you know, just pretend like um we're we're here together as a you know like a, a, a couple or something like that um and uh you know i always take pictures past her head and things like that so i can photograph everybody <laughs> he, um he kept so I just i kept missing yeah. i kept missing pictures of my wife i was like oh you know, you know um and like you know take hey i'm taking a selfie of myself and just take the people be oh take the people behind me and um and so then uh you know then peter brimlow came and then we're like, oh boy, there's Peter Brimlow, which we could, we, we, Peter Brimlow is a white nationalist for folks who don't know. And he was there with his wife who is 40 years younger than her. So you, you can't miss the two of them. He's 75, she's 38. And um, so you, you just immediately know when Peter and Olivia Brimlow show up because of that. Um, he has so a we, very unique hairstyle. He, yeah, that's right. Is yeah. he, he looks, I don't know, like if you ever see like a, like, you know, like a, a, a you know, an, like an early 90s Megadeth video where they have the old man in a video where he looks like he's supposed to look scary or something. That's kind of like what Peter Brimlow looks like. And um, so we were there and, uh, you know, we were waiting for the cocktail thing to end. And I, the, the strategy the two of us had agreed to was just to not make too much of a thing. So we're not going to go up and ask Peter Brimlow a question. The sooner we got, you know, we started asking people questions, the, the quicker people might figure out that we're there um, to report on this and would get rid of us. So we just kind of kept a, um, kept our cool and then um, made it up there. We made it up there and we wanted to make it through the speeches if we could. So we made it through the speeches um, and one by one, uh, this was ours has had gone by. And then in between the speeches, I would, I would take time taking photographs and things like that. Hannah was pulling a lot of audio. Um, we were getting as much um, together as we could. And um then I'm getting us to the Josh Hammer uh, thing. We got to the end of the speeches, which is the end of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. So we basically completed the event. We did it. We did the whole five hour thing. We managed to stay cool documenting without any problem. And then we, we, we uh, Hannah wanted to stay together. Well, we, you know, with this debate, quick debate, do we want to split up and, and interview people or do we want to do it as a pair? She wanted to do it as a pair. So, okay, let's do it as a pair. Look, we're going to go to Brimlow first. We walked over towards Peter Brimlow, the white nationalist, but then we saw him moving. And I said, look, you got to got to see who he wants to talk to. He wants to talk to somebody. It was Steve Bannon, right? So we waited. We did that. Um, then we talked to the Brimlows after that. Uh, they didn't want to talk to us. And then we turned around and Josh well, Peter, Hammer was Peter there. Shook my hand. He, we, got, we got that far. We did, we were not entirely sure that Peter knew who he's talking to. Um, <laughs> could have. But it, it, it was late. He's, yeah. <laughs> I asked, I, I said, Lydia, can I talk to you of his wife? And she was, you've been hounding me, uh, which is not true. I do have a story about Peter that's coming out this week. It should be this week, I think, um, that I think is very good. It's Christmas themed. It's a Christmas themed story. It's a holiday oh. hate watch story. Yeah. Uh, and she said, is you've it been fun? hounding is me. It, and that is, is not true. Is it for true. the whole family? And I have not been hounding her <laughs> or anyone else. I, um, I uh, sent her an email with about, you know, 20 bullet points on it, um, which is what I usually do because I want to know answers to questions. Uh, that's not hounding. Uh, she could have, you know, just ignored the email. That's not hounding. Uh, anyway, I'm just, uh, I'm talking to myself here, defending my work. Uh, so then um, we saw Josh Hammer. And now is the part where you wanted to, you wanted to talk about. So Hannah's like, there's Josh Hammer, you know? And I was like, oh, so, so there is. Uh, and I had, 
I was surprised that Josh Hammer did not recognize me because I had taken so many photographs of Josh Hammer. I took pictures of Josh Hammer from here, from there. I would put a camera in front of his face and be like, like, hello, I'm taking a picture of Josh Hammer. I think these guys like having their picture taken so much. Like they have so, so much of them like uh, envision themselves as celebrities or want to think of themselves as being famous rather than infamous. But like, you know, want to think of themselves like, oh, I'm a star, I'm important. So they don't notice that this guy who's reporting on you in real life most of the time is also there just taking your picture. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how they didn't notice. The point is, um, I walked up to Josh Hammer and I said, hi, Josh, it's Mike Hayden from SPLC. And tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, Hannah. He he looks at me and he's <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that that is accurate. And then he asked, <laughs> if, we, okay. he asked okay. if we go to these every year. Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, okay, do you, do you go to these every year? And I'm like, both of us are like, not, no. not really, man. Not not really, actually. Um, I was like, you're going to talk to Peter Brimlow. Are you going to talk to Peter Brimlow? Brimlow, for again, once again, a you know, a white nationalist. Uh, and so he's like, oh, Peter's here. Oh, where or whatever. And then Hannah's like, hi, I'm Hannah. From the SPLC. With the SPLC. And he's like, oh, yeah. She's like, Peter Brillo's there. He's right there. And he turns around and he says, oh, I'm definitely going to talk to him. And then so I said, ja. I said, oh, okay. What? I was like, what is going on? Like, what the fuck? Is, what, what is this conversation? And then I was like, so Josh, uh, um, how did you get your job at Newsweek? Because everybody wants to know, like, why is this political activist who, you know, has no, I mean, he's just a Claremont Institute character. If you're not familiar with Claremont, anybody, do, would you, people in your audience know what Claremont is? Um, some of them might, but why don't you, you, you uh, let them know for the ones who don't? It's a little bit, it's got a little bit of Peter Thiel vibes. It's a, uh, it's a- It's in California. It's a California-based- filled with election deniers, uh, kind of post-Trump think tank, a kind of a, a heavily, uh, you know, hard right authoritarian anti-democracy think tank filled with like weird, weirdly, you know, weird people, right? And they get once, I mean, all you need to know is like very close to when Pizzagate happened, like maybe a year or two, they they gave Jack Pizovic an award, um, like an award, like special, you know, they these people love giving awards to each other. It's like special commendation for being a, a dipshit. Um, and so, so uh, yeah, so we don't know how Josh Hammer just randomly wound up in this, in this completely financially uh, fragile publication, Newsweek, which everybody knows, all of a sudden they wind up and everybody's wondering, including many Newsweek like employees are asking me, how did this guy wind up here? Right. It's very weird. He's a he's a he's a weird uh, hard right political operative from Claremont Institute. Why is he running the opinion in this section? It doesn't make any sense. And giving all these bylines to all these kind of freaks uh, like Raheem Kassam. No offense, Raheem, if you're here. Uh, and, <laughs> oh, I think they're still here. Yeah. And uh, well, no, I, I don't mean it. I mean, he knows what he, it's a weird it, it, at least Raheem definitely knows it's weird right <laughs> it's weird we but we can both agree with that that he's that he's you know what is he doing at Newsweek it's very weird anyway the point is that so um uh we're uh so I, I was then I said like Josh like how did you get how did you get your job at Newsweek uh which is you know part of the questions I've been asking for a while and he just stops and you could feel like the like the little molecules of time. Uh, I'm sorry. You feel like like things just kind of slowing down suddenly. You know, it's just like trickling to a stop. And then he's like, "I'm sorry. Who did you say you were again?" I said, "I'm Mike Hayden from SPLC." <laughs> I told you. And he's like, he's like, <laughs> like his face just like you could just feel. It felt like an elevator had broken loose from its, its like the the, it, the its cable and just dropped inside of him, and he's like, "I think we need to go." Uh, I think we need to go, and then he kind of. about this date for yeah, for he's date, yeah. And I think we need to go, and he starts moving, and then he stops, and he turns around and goes, "I don't know Peter Brumlow. I don't, I don't know Peter Brumlow at all." <laughs> well, and then and then his date. His date turns around too as they're leaving, and she's like, 
you look like you work for the SPLC. That, yeah, I don't, like, I, don't, I don't know what that I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I, I don't know. Is there a she, maybe maybe she has soy detection levels or something. <laughs> she has yeah. soy dar. I, I get that a that lot. Is, like that, what, what I yeah. usually get, what I usually get from the from uh, the 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 women that say they love to be like you you know, of course he's a beta male. He's a beta. He's a beta male. And a he's simp. not slunking. He's not eating red meat. He's a beta male simp cuck. He's a, which is like for me. I mean, these are where like I'm. You know, I'll, like, I, I I've been posting Madonna links to Madonna songs. Like, I, would you? I, like, do you, do you like? What, like, what do you really? Do I look like somebody who's like desperately trying to prove how masculine he is? This is really. You got the wrong. You got. You're going after the wrong shit here. Is what I would say to that. Anyway. Um, anyway, the end. That's what happened with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know who I know. It was really all around the board. For Josh and him, yeah, it was I mean, really, it was really quite embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it I was. Mean, that's... Josh, Josh, Josh did not distinguish himself in that moment. And then, the, the, then after that finished, oh, this is extended Josh, but we can. We'll, I'm sure you're going to want to talk about Jack. But just we, before you get into Jack, I just want to say we were waiting to speak to Jack because there were these like you know people who were like, oh, we take a picture with you, Jack, right? We're in the like you know like standing to get take a picture with Jack Dzovic. Which is, um, you made a lot of wrong turns in life if you're trying to do that. And uh, we were waiting to talk to Jack. And Hammer, we, we had to go on stage to do that. And Hammer is below the stage and he's like, you know, he's all pale and he's, he's like looking like he's doing the PB dance or something. And I was like, hey, I know you. I just talked to you, to him. I was like, hi. Uh, and he's like down below the stage. And <laughs> um, while we're waiting to speak to Jack, and it's like, he's like, trying to text Jack and he's like, like this is like, you know, and then he just climbs onto the stage and he runs in front of us and he's like, Jack, Jack, there's some people with this plus other property laws. <laughs> Jack, Jack, like, 10 four. like, I'm prepared. I'm prepared now. I'm like, you know, you remember Cernovich, like I'm maintaining emotional control. Anyway, that's the end of the, the hammer arc there when he like, he goes and like like a, a brave, a brave soldier jumps in front of the bullet for Jack to let him know who's next online to speak to him. Now, I, that that's that that story is amazing, um, especially because he he he, he <laughs> the re I could picture the reaction. I mean, just from his Twitter profile, I could see the guy's reaction from what you're explaining. Um, someone I noticed in the pictures that was in the crowd that you guys didn't write about and as a New Yorker I couldn't help but notice uh, her uh, a New York City councilwoman Vicky Palladino who is known for being a, a far oh, yeah. right yeah she was any any interesting th any interesting uh, background there in terms of seeing her there or she was just one of the many faces in the crowd yeah, I think she one of the just... many faces in the crowd there for, uh, for us I'm sorry Hannah go ahead if you want yeah yeah I was just gonna say I mean there were uh I mean, it, basically, they just managed to get a fair number of Congress people. There were well, three Congress people in addition to Marjorie Taylor Greene, three of whom were recently elected, and then some local politicians. Um, and they were. This was part of their giant ass list. I mean, they got it. Got it. Had to be at least over two dozen um, of these various special guests that they were advertising. Um, and yeah, she was on there, but I don't think we had any interactions with her. Uh, I knew she was there based on the, again, giant ass list of special guests. I I, I, I think one of the, I've been talking to a lot of press uh, about this over the last two days. I think it was, it was the times that asked me like, what, you know, had, did you spend a lot of time looking at the three, uh, you know, Congress people that were there? And the answer is no. And, and, and this was, you know, in retrospect, we had decisions to make because there are only two of us and we needed to cover to several different angles. It, yeah, we could have probably focused on the Congress people and focused on politicians, but I think it was safest and most clearly uh, part of our, our mission to, to focus on the kind of um, American centric uh, figures that are, you know, Southern property law, that are in Southern property law centers wheelhouse. 
um, and people that are in Trump world. But um, yeah, I mean, it was difficult, right? Like, you know, we we had some folks from Germany reaching out to us and I wish we get, we, we gra did more to grab material about the Germans, but um, we did the best we could uh, in the circumstances that we had. Oh, right, of course. Yeah. Now, the, so let's let's talk about um, uh, let's talk about a Bumble Jack. What, what what let's let's get let's get into Bumble Jack. Uh, he was the, the should we talk talk about him first or Marjorie Taylor Greene? I don't know. I feel like we got to go a little bit into each of them a little bit more. Uh, I guess start mm. with Bumble Jack, right? Uh, who who's mo who's the main event here? Well, uh, Bumble. Well, I mean, so. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Bumble Jack is like a more, um, more. I think he's more intriguing than Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, in some ways. Um, if you want to save Bar Bumble Jack, we can. But like, um, yeah, I mean, we could, you know, you start. I mean, so so Jack Jack received Jack was there to receive an award. Uh, he was awarded. Uh, he was given an award, like a, a deep state, uh, like the, the kind of anti deep state activist was given an award in the name of a of a former head of CIA uh, <laughs> who, you know, I'm going to guess would probably not want Jack to have it, even if he was a uh, anti-communist uh, activist or whatever. I, I mean, it's hard to imagine anyone wanting their award to be associated with Jack Kosovic. But um, yeah, I mean, we can quickly recap who Jack is, I think. I think that's a good idea. He is a, a social media performer. Uh, who uh, started as an as a Game of Thrones account on Twitter? I love that part. <laughs> and uh, once in and once allegedly in a in a crowd of white nationalists, um, introduced himself to Richard Spencer as Roger Stone's man. Um, he is uh, Jack is corny. I think is one thing that made people not want to cover him too much because there's like something that's like inherently cringe about Jack. Uh, he's he's a little like he just he he's he, he's kind of narcissistic in the sense of like just everything is about you know him and his tweets and 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 just how much he's on Twitter. He's like a volume Twitter poster. Um, he was involved in pushing PizzaGate. He was involved in putting a number of uh, disinformation cam campaigns, political, politically charged disinformation campaigns, the Rape Melania campaign, for example. He helped push uh, Russian uh, intelligence-backed uh, Macron leaks campaign uh, in, in May of 2017. He's connected to a number of radical right figures and has for a long time, he, he's uh, 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 did shot two propaganda videos uh, during his Rebel News days with the Clark brothers. Um, the Clark brothers, one of the Clark brothers commits suicide on the morning of October 27th, 2018. Uh, his parents said he did so to stop himself from uh, doing the same thing that Robert Bowers did at the Tree of Life Synagogue uh, that day. Uh, the other Clark brother uh, went to jail on weapons charges. Um, weird people to be hanging out with. Oh, Lucian Wintrich. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, should I pull him in? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Can I tell the backstory before we start talking to Lucian Wintrich? Yeah, sure. Oh, we can we can talk to him. I don't give a sh I, you know, this, this is going to go off the rails very quickly. If, uh, yeah, if, I'm sure it will. Maybe you should about. finish the well, I, well, I pull him in and finish the Jack story. I got to <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so I've given you a bit of a wind up. Everybody knows Jim Bumble Jack at this point. I mean, All right, uh, let me, let me... so uh, essentially, uh, I had on, you know, I had got some, some, some intelligence about Jack that, uh, you know, preceded his arrival, let's put it that way, uh, and, uh, was able to document his arrival in New York City. And, um, you know, he tweeted, oh, you know, Antifa don't even try it tonight, uh, three hours after I had already, uh, seen him arrive. And, um... Yeah, we went to go talk to Jack at the end of the night. And the, the thing I decided to ask him uh, was, uh, you know, I, I, I was like, well, there's so many things you can ask Jack. But I think one of the things that is most interesting for people to learn is like, why did Jack, why did Jack start tweeting about Stop the Steal on September 7, 2020, before anyone else did? Uh, why? Now, I know that Stop the Steal had, uh, had, existed in, you know, he was part of it in 2016. 
He was part of it in 2018. Uh, and that was uh, during Ron DeSantis' campaign in Florida. But when it started to come back in 2020, it started with a Jack Pozobic tweet. Uh, Ali Alexander tweeted it the same day. So I wanted to ask him, where did it start? Who gave the signal for this? Where, where, where did it come from? Why did it come from? Where, what happened? You know? And uh, Jack uh, didn't answer these questions very well. Uh, he, uh, he started saying, it's a meme, it's a meme. And then he blamed Roger Stone. And then he blamed Ali Alexander. Uh, and then he started to get uh, agitated and he started accusing me of, of, of doing something terrible. And he says, you haven't apologized to my wife uh, for what you did to me on your wedding day, which I, I, didn't, I don't remember this very well. This is the Newsweek <laughs> case. I guess I reached out for comment during his wedding. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to my phone during my wedding. I don't know. Just me. I, um, I, I had the no posting rule during my wedding, so I don't know what he was doing. He was claiming that he, Mike should have known that he was gang married. I wasn't really he paying was attention. Posting to my about phone. gang married, which is like, why I would you do that? <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention to my phone during Hannah's wedding, quite frankly. Well, thank you. <laughs> so if you reached out for me a comment, then I wouldn't have really paid attention to it. So anyway, he started to do that, and then he said, then he started to lose his temper, and he's like, you're a scumbag. You're a troll. And then. I said, I said, I'm a cute scumbag, is what I, I'm a cute, I'm, I'm a scumbag, I'm a cute, I'm cute, I'm a cute scumbag. And then the guy next to me said, what did he say? He said, he says he's a cute scumbag. <laughs> I just remember it very well. Anyway, so he, he got very vis visibly agitated, and this dude, Bish Burra, was a very burly, a burly guy, and he was really mad, and he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to, to leave. Uh, and Hannah, did, I said, I don't want, well, I paid my, for my ticket. And then he got very like this. He had stress breath and he was like, kind of like, <laughs> how, how, get you to go? how, and, how and much were the tickets, by like, the way? Hannah was like, Mike, Mike, Mike. And I'm like, I don't want, I need my paper. I'm still here. I'm still talking to my friend, Bumble Jack. <laughs> like, why are you trying to make me to go? And, uh, I, you know, I, I, it's Hannah was just like, you should go. And then I, I, I would go a little bit. And then I ran into Matthew Cheerman. I was like, Matthew I was Cheerman, right. what's up, right. dude, on the way out? And he's like, Mike Hayden, I want to debate you or something. And then I, I want well, to he wanted take a selfie. Yeah, he wanted to yeah. take a selfie. And we're like, no, you're not doing that shit. We're not taking a selfie with you. Well, he did, he no did take a photo. And I think it's like my hand, like, hold, like, up to my face. Yeah, I was not like that. doing that. I said yeah. hi to Ron Coleman. I was like, Ron Nitrain Coleman, what's happening, bud? And I gave him a big kick as we're on that. And then this is when Bish's stress breath started to get like really strong. This is where he got like really upset. He's kind of, you know, he's like he's like a he's like a a a, a B level X Men villain or something. Uh, he's coming, he's there and and and, the and I said, I said, <laughs> I said, Vish, Vish. Who vetted this thing? Who vetted this? I said, did you know Peter Brimlow is here? Did you know that? Who vetted this? And that's what he's like, you Peter Brimlow go. and the Southern Poverty Law Center, <laughs> somehow. Oh, you so that's how go. you guys got, that's how you guys finally got uh, the boot. Yeah, uh, and then there was, there was another guy who was outside who had his head shaved and he was like, <laughs> giving me one of these. And I was like, what are you gonna do? And Hannah's like, come on, man, come on. And I was like, what are you gonna do? Well, what are you gonna do? I mean, like, you're gonna beat the shit out of me here. I mean, like, you know, I'm not saying, like, I wasn't saying, like, what, I was like, what, go ahead. I mean, go ahead and take a swing if you want. I'm not gonna fight back. But I need you to know, I was like, is that what this is? Are you gonna beat the shit out of me? Like, are you gonna beat the shit out of me on the street? Well, like, Michael, you did, you really? did commit the, you did commit the crime of getting invited to their event. I mean, <laughs> they, they sent the invitation. How much were tickets, by the Dining way? Dining while beta. I committed the crime of being a beta male. Dining in their presence, a, a a simp beta orbiter in their presence. We didn't eat the chicken. We got we got a, <laughs> both of us are pescatarians, um, and we got the vegetarian dish. So that was really that was really what did us in ultimately. Uh, Anna, so you didn't even, were, you, you missed out an important part of that. What the speaker? Whoever the speaker was, well, we were just like I said, let's eat the meal food now, so we oh, can yeah. get. So just eat the food now so we can move around like in a second. We were always trying to make sure we didn't get into conversation with the people at our table eating. And we're eating like the vegetarian, which is quite good, by the way. It's delicious. It was uh, very good. It was excellent. risotto, I think. It was a risotto yeah. uh, with like sort of a <laughs> tomato thing. It was, it, was, it was delicious. It was delicious. Mushrooms, and we, we eat yeah. it very quickly. 
And while this was happening, whoever the speaker was was like, eat soy. They want to make you eat the soy. <laughs> and the bugs. Oh, well, yeah, the bugs. They, talk, they talked about Literally the bugs. Everyone's was eating bugs now. Yeah, we were bones and soy, and we were just like eating the veg meal really quickly while everybody else was like, "Who, who did you sit with? Anyway, ta- any anyone any, anyone uh, interesting that you did, at your table?" I took their pictures. I have like a million faces. I should just drop them all on Twitter one day. Um, I've just been. It was the really random table. It was the ran- It was like it was like the like, yeah. It was the, yeah. I don't so know. How, how much I were the tickets for this? Okay, we so got the early about, bird special. What was it? Four hundred each. Jesus and it, it Christ! Went up. <laughs> you should have had okay, the chicken. Well, I mean, you, you should have had the chicken. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we should have had the chicken and the vegetarian meal, and then like I don't know, stolen a bottle of like watered down liquor for the road or something like that. Um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. I, the the bartenders were all very nice. Um, and one of them, we outed ourselves as reporters to her, and she kept being like, "Are you recording this? Are you recording this? Please, it's terrible." Um, but so tickets were four hundred dollars a person, <laughs> and um, that was the bartender. The, the bartender, party. by the way, was like, "I, I just, w- I went up. To, I had like a little prosecco, and I went up to her, and I'm like, I'm not a Republican." <laughs> and then she, they loved she us. They loved us. She's like, she's like, I love you. I love you. I'm from the Upper West Side. I love you. I, I kept trying to give her a tip, and she wouldn't take my money. My my friend, I'm friends with Jerry Nadler. I love you. <laughs> yeah, it's but yeah. It, so for, so tickets were four hundred dollars a person um, when they were the early bird tickets, and that was for non-members. Uh, obviously, we are not members of the New York Young Republicans Club. I am yet, considering yet. it. Yeah, yes, is yes, Ashley uh, Saint Clair yes. here? Is she in charge of that? Can we get? Can you get I, us membership? I would really love to join. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think I thought that event was very interesting. I would really love to come and dialogue more often. Um, regardless, but yeah, they were four hundred dollars a piece, and then at the end of September, they went up to about eight hundred. Oh so that's a lot. Oh, you could yeah. buy a full table. I think that was like two thousand, three thousand dollars, somewhere thereabouts. Imagine paying eight hundred dollars to see Bumble Jack, <laughs> <laughs> and sit there. Did he? Did he at least plot the guitar and serenade the audience? Did he at least do yeah, that? He did oh not. yeah, he's, he plays bass, right? Oh, you're, have you ever heard? You, I, I would recommend everybody in the audience. This includes any right wingers who are on the audience as well. Do yourself a favor and Google the YouTube video of Bumble Jack doing a medley of. David Bowie songs. Uh, it, it, right? Is it, it, you've seen it, right? I, you showed it to yeah. me. I remember. I remember we we had to like. And pop, we like, are the spider. Yeah. Oh, so, so so should good. I it's so should so I bring uh, should I bring Lucian into the uh, call? You can. I. What do you think? Is it? I don't know. It may be a little weird. Yes. Oh, can you, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I say, I mean, hi. How's it going, dude? All right, I'll, I, I'll bring him I, in. I, I'll, now yeah, he sure. he was at the he was he, like he's a he's a member of the New York Young Republicans Club, right, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took pictures of him. Is there uh-huh. activism <laughs> something or other? He does he does some activism thing. I don't know. I I have a book somewhere that set, has titles of some of the people associated with the organization. All right, here he is. Hold on, let me pull him up on the feed. And to video though. Oh, he doesn't want to. See, he doesn't want us to see. Internet. Hello? <laughs> no video? Is there Hello? Oh, right. All right. Okay, that's a little better. Is there, is there I don't know. I, I have a book somewhere that said. Has... Well, now we're hearing Hannah back. Like. Yeah, that's a little weird. Oh, he's got. He's got a weird. Right. You got to turn the uh, volume off the the live stream, uh, Lucian. You have to just use your microphone. This happens sometimes when people call in. Wait, is 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 this too bad? Uh, there's too Hello? much of an echo. No video. Uh, because I, I hear the live stream playing. You got to shut off the live okay, give stream. Give me a second. I, I can hear the echo. That's bad. One second. All right. He's playing the live stream. Author this is one happening. of my favorite articles in Gateway Funded History, actually, which is um, the, 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 it, didn't he do the Antifa, like headless, uh, like Antifa super soldiers to behead white parents on November 4th? Oh, yeah. That's, one, that's my so. favorite one. See, I don't remember anything. I, remember. I mean, I, I know his name has come across my my computer screen time. He's kind of like, before, he, but I don't remember in, uh, anything off the top of my head with Lucian. He's in Jack's Venmo contract. Uh, contacts. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> well, he's on the call and he's got to figure out what's going on with the computer or I don't know how he's calling in. Um, I, I don't gotta... know. I, I don't know. I don't want to spend a. I, I don't want to spend a ton of time talking to Lucian Winter. Oh yeah, okay. I know. Yeah, let's, but but you know what? He gave. He's the one who gave well, the he... DM. The uh, DM me his uh, his username. I always enjoy when someone wants to engage. I guess Ashley St. Clair. Yeah, that's that. That's yeah. Doesn't want to do that. She is chatting All away right. in the is, live is chat. This little, is this a little better? You know. Guys, oh yes, uh, yes, it, it 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 is. It is. You don't want to use the video though. You want you want to see me? I mean, we see all three of us. Might as well see you too, if you don't mind. You don't we have can, to. We but... can do video if need be. We can do video. Yeah, let's do video. Why? Why don't you want to do video? <laughs> this is strange. Actually, okay. I'm realizing now. There's a there's a lag from somebody else's side. No, I don't. Uh, the three of us, I don't. We did hear it before, but you fixed that. Now everything's fine on my end. Same with Hannah and Michael, right? You don't hear any lag or anything. No. No, I'm totally down. There's a lag from somebody else's side. I'll, I will turn on my video if somebody fixes the lag. We can do I, both. I mean, I can. I can give you a real show. All right, I, I, there's nothing I can oh, do. You got to just, Lord. there you go. There you are. Okay. Hello, Lucian. There, uh, there so are. what would you like? You wanted to call in. What would you like to talk about? Uh, please uh, go ahead. Address whatever you heard from Michael and Hannah that you uh, disagreed with or whatever. Um, the floor is yours to, to, to say your, your piece. I'm hearing myself uh, five seconds I, I, we don't hear it on our end, so you could just you could talk right now. Go ahead, and we'll just hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, what's the what's the complaint that um, you came to an event? We were aware of your presence there. You had a uh, the meal itself could have been better. Um, that could be a complaint. Could you have complained about the chicken? Uh, across every news network, not really. So I think you came up with white nationalists and and uh, reinsurgents of uh, the Klan, whatever the fuck else. It was it was it, bizarrely nonsensical. Your your reporting was so disingenuous. Uh, Jim Hopped of the Gateway Pundit is uh, is publishing. Something against your piece. Uh, I left that publication in May. You're claiming that I was fired because I'm a white nationalist. Not true. Uh, what else did you claim? Um, That's not. I don't think we did. We mention you in the story even. Well, you're, you're you at all. retarded. Uh, uh, Twitter presence <clears throat> did. So I you know, like. I know we don't. We don't appreciate the ableist sixty milligrams. Slurs. You forget what you mentioned on Twitter, uh, but no, I saw I saw that one. Okay, do you, okay, but okay. So so so, how did you end up leaving Gateway Pundit? As far as I remember, it was because you appeared on a, a live stream. I can't with Nick be Quentin. White House correspondent if I if I leave DC. You can't be a DC bureau chief if you're not in DC. I left DC in May. Uh, I was on a Nick's program debating him in May. Why did you leave DC? Have you ever lived in DC or tried to? I mean, I've well, been... you you might you might fit in, but oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, but you're you're in New York okay. though. What's the? I mean, it's not like you left for like some uh, some small town or rural area. You, you left for be, one. You need to be metropolitan in, area for another. In, did you need to be in DC? Let me ask you to write the headline. Um, November 4th, millions of Antifa super soldiers will behead all white parents <laughs> for Gateway Pundit. Well, I did. On a, a, October, a, October, I will just say, unironically, so my not favorite seen headline. The article, um, millions of Antifa, Antifa soldiers will behead all white parents. Had I not written that article, uh, there was a chance. <laughs> Wait, so are you know. claiming? Are, are you claiming? Are you? Oh, hold on. Right now, are you claiming that? Are you, you claiming that? I would behead white parents. I don't think you'd be a parent. My dad uh, is so white. So you would want to behead 
what? whoever it is. And oh, you're, you, you know, you wouldn't want to target the black people. Um, I can only see you targeting white people. Okay. Um, okay. Especially you... during uh, earlier parts of this interview. Are, are you clear? Are you, as, as, a white, are you... as, a, as a white guy, who I, by the way, I believe is uh, closeted on a hand on far too much Adderall. Um, to keep mentioning, oh, it was so white and uh, undiverse. I, never said and I was, was in a so room white. full of white. No, you did earlier. I, when did we, I say it was a white? We were all listening to that. That was insane. That's so silly. Aren't you, uh, <laughs> isn't the response, um, as a white man, how could you say that? I'm 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 gonna be genuine. I'm gonna be genuine with you. I'm gonna be genuine with you. I really don't know what you're trying to say. Please, please be genuine. There were people of color at the event, of course. No one's saying that. Yeah, I'm and I'm saying uh, I'm saying that I believe you would, if you had the chance, be head uh, all white families and their children. Um Wait, are you are you saying Michael yeah. is Antifa then? Yeah. Michael is what is he uh, the 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 leader of Antifa? Is he the in the headquarters Antifa HQ? I, I'm, I'm afraid Wait, that okay, you're... I, I need to get something straight. Are we are are we Beta Soy Cucks or are we Antifa Super Soldiers? Because these two things do not square. I'm sorry. Um, you can be both. You can be both. I think I think I think the general dangerous. like okay. So okay, so yeah. rather than trying to do a bit here. The general vibe uh, and what we are trying to do with the event itself was we did identify you guys as uh, maybe abrasive press early on. Our hope is that we're, you know, nice and charming and willing to talk and you guys are willing to chill out rather than taking running around, making people uncomfortable, taking crazy retard photos. And uh, I don't like, appreciate. The, I don't appreciate. But wait, what? What? Slurs. What? What's the di- What's the difference between a, a a regular photo and a crazy R word photo? What is the What is the difference? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't even say that. Oh, all right. Well, because I don't uh, want to say that. I've never said that well, word. Well, yeah. Honestly. I, I, what is it? It's it's a picture of somebody uh, um on FaceTime. And your caption is, oh, my God, how dare they talk to somebody on FaceTime? Uh, your picture of me, That's... it looks like I, I have no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> what? Um, what? We're sorry. We'll fix it. Wait, so running around, just running around wait, doing wait. that shit and, <laughs> and being awkward with people at, I don't know, what's in your event? Like how's that appropriate? Wait, can, can we, can a, we... from from a human standpoint, how is that appropriate? And how can you feel good about yourself? And then this this bizarre media blitz. Um, I'm so, I, I'm sorry say, that your photograph what? appeared to have no what teeth. Did you I apologize. Out? What did you figure out? You knew if you were mm-hmm. okay. If you bought a fucking ticket, early bird, by the way, cheapo. If you bought a ticket. Right? Wait, doesn't um, early bird exist in, so your biggest wait, supporters wait can chicken, can get you it? You ate the chicken, you ate the chocolate mousse, right? We we we, we, then, we, we ate the veg meal. Hey, 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 hey Hi, we ate the yeah. veg meal. I'm pescatarian. <laughs> I'm also a pescatarian. So you, you got the silent veg meal. So you had to you need to request it. Interesting. We requested it from the waiter. Yeah, exactly. you did some I, can we get can we can we uh Oh I I I I actually thought you were gonna tell them and knowing that that was an option that we had, that was the only research you did in your piece. And yet, you're trying this media blitz out. What, that what, is what, what, wild. What Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you talking about? I, I, I actually thought- What are you talking about? The media what blitz of you coming on this show, obviously. This is the big media blitz. The, uh, <laughs> right is, about, I, I'm doing the media you, blitz. You I'm not doing the media blitz. People are asking children. to speak to us. And you don't even know what programs you're because you're on too much Adderall. I don't take Adderall. I don't well, take Adderall either. Uh, I really don't. don't. Uh, give me but, your give me your receipts. But, 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 Lucian, I want to go back to right. you saying. Well, I, the, the, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Hannah can we? Uh, I, I only know your. I name feel like we've entertained some thing. some some of this. But I know and, Hannah uh, doesn't because she's fairly subdued. Uh, Michael or Matt or whatever your name is. 
Matt, I mean, look, you're... Can, can I ask you? Can I ask you a question uh, really quick? Because uh, we, we brought up home. We brought up. We brought up. You brought up that you weren't uh, fired from a uh, gateway pundit. But I, I actually forgot what the whole story there was. So while you were talking with Michael, I looked it up. Um, you were on a podcast with okay. Nick Fuentes. Uh, that's apparently why you got right. fired. Are you are you saying that Nick Fuentes is not a is not a white nationalist? And your appearance on that show wasn't a big deal. Um. Well, I first of all, I love how you pronounce uh, Nick. I can't even pronounce uh, his Hispanic last name as accurately as you did. But I I went on Nick's show. Um. Uh -huh. Did you did you go at it with him? Did you debate him? Did you debate him oh, yeah. on the issues well, and fight yeah. back and say? I, I'm sure I'm sure there are clips of it. Yeah, the entire thing was a debate while his chat was calling me a faggot. To be expected. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I I again the reason that I that I popped in here is I I totally believe in open conversation, open dialect. I knew that a Nick's show would be hostile territory. I I kind of liked it for that reason. Ideally, if I if I can make a good enough point, then you know some people will be won over. Um, and you guys wait won over to what though? What were you, you arguing with you him could, about? You could have you you guys could have also came to the event with a slightly open mind. I knew your tickets were were bought by a fucking special interest. And you had to make something. Wait, what are the seem special as interests? Bombastic, as seemingly possible. What are the I'm special sorry. interests? Okay, I just want to just say something. I just want to bring things to planet Earth for a second, uh, Lucian. I, uh, yeah, I'm... and by the way, I'm, when I say special interests, I'm not talking about the Jews. I'm I'm talking about uh, just the the Antifa, the white Antifa members who go to liberal arts schools and who do behead young children. I, I went to a okay. Liberal I, I just want to say one thing. I just want to say anything. You're saying we make it sound as we make it sound as uh, crazy as possible or whatever. OK, I didn't make Gavin Wax talk about going to war with people in the street. I didn't make him so do he, that. Here's a question for you. Was I didn't make him nice do that. Hey, 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 hey. You no, 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 buddy. Yeah. He, I didn't make him say that. All right. I quoted him. All right. You I didn't make, make Marjorie Taylor Greene talk about an armed insurrection. I didn't make her do that. She did. That. You you said that I have white nationalist ties. I, where did I say um, that? That is provably false, especially. Well, you, you uh, did appear um, on a, you did appear on a podcast with 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 with, with Nick Fuentes. Didn't I'm you? an American. Be, be, um, what is it? Because uh, my grandparents survived the Holocaust. Um, to to oh. equate me with white nationalism is is so wildly offensive. Well, then why are you hanging out with Nick Fuentes, man? Pretty good question. Thank you. Why are you talking about okay, so, my question? So, How do you okay. feel about Peter Brimlow at your event? How do you feel about Peter Brimlow at your event? Um, why were you at the event? If you're talking about Peter <laughs> Brimlow, why were you? Well, oh, I, I, I you think that well, the same reason that Peter Brimlow was there. Yeah, because it was it was open to people who bought tickets. If you could, or I guess if your entity could afford it. Uh, early bird special, then you guys roll in. He wasn't VIP. He wasn't being like, uh, I mean, there were certain people. Okay, so actually, I'm going to interrupt you there because that's very interesting that you say he wasn't VIP. Because one thing I did notice throughout the night is that there were multiple people, mostly young men, who went up to Peter Brimlow and seemed to be very engaged in talking to him. So clearly, a fair number of people knew who he was. Here's the thing, though. Uh, yeah. Didn't you guys, you said you spoke to him also, right? I tried to. Okay, so you, you tried to speak to uh, Peter, but you couldn't because there were other people speaking to him. Um, no, 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 no. We tried no, no. to speak, speak to Peter, and he wanted to have nothing to do with us. In fact, because when he was worked for Southern Poverty Law Center, Center. Peter, Peter. because we worked for SPLC. <laughs> But did you say, hey, I work for SPLC, I want to speak to you? Yeah. He knows I who did. we are. I introduced <laughs> myself as Hamill from the SPLC. I've I've been at events with him in like twenty sixteen. I've he's, he's written six he's, he's written six I or mean, seven articles about listen, me on V Dare. 
Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I personally, I've personally never spoken to him. Um, I would be curious to speak to him, and I bet you would. Uh, I bet you would, man. <laughs> no, I but Lucian, Lucian, really. Lucian, yeah. Lucian, hold on, Lucian, hold on, well, hold on. Well, we I, know, I we know, probably, we know, we know Hannah I, and I Michael went it. there. I oh, huh. Why the fuck am I? Why? Why am I talking to you guys right now? No, reason, I listen. Um, that's a good point. Yeah, I, no, I, can guarantee I don't know. I, I don't know. Actually, it's I, I got to be honest with you. I have no idea. No, but I just want to let, let me let me just sit here. So we know <laughs> Hannah and Michael went there right. to report on what was going there for the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center. There's no doubt. You you know that because you're here upset with how they wrote the article. They didn't go there to you know go to you know hang out and be chummy chummy with these guys. What do you think Peter Brimlow's reason for buying this expensive multiple hundred dollar ticket was? Do you think he was going possibly, there because he possibly eight hundred or whatever of dollars? Yeah. Money. Do you think he went because he he like why do you think he and bought? Do this we ticket know that he go? paid? Do we know that he paid? Yeah. Just, he, yeah, he paid. But even if he that? paid, uh-huh. I mean that like that to me. Yeah. yeah. So what? Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. prove that. So why do you think he paid though? What do you, what do you think Absolutely. he got out of um, going oh, to this event? If you were to challenge that, yeah, that can that can easily be fucking proven. But that's a weird thing to focus on. No, I don't want to chat. I don't care about the money. He paid. No. Fine. He paid eight hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, comp. whatever. He didn't give a. He didn't give a speech. That's. He was a guest. He that's, was fine. that's fine. Um, that's fine. That's fine. You wanted to talk to him. You guys wanted to talk to him. That's that's fine. What what reason do you yeah. think Wait, drew him to this event? Having having having. A, it's actually really funny, uh, Hannah, darling. Um, Mm-hmm. While while you're there, what, why won't you answer that question? What do you think drew Peter Brimlow to the event? What do you think drew Peter Brimlow? Why do you think Peter Brimlow was drawn to paying eight hundred dollars to attend this event? What do you think he was get, going to get he, out of he it? He didn't what? pay eight. Whatever he well, paid, I, I, man. Whatever he paid. I, look, if he got the same early bird special, but dude, uh, you're you're trying yeah, to ignore, uh, avoid the, the question. Match, you're avoiding maybe. the question. Why did why he? Why was he drawn to go to the event? Yes. Why do you think he wanted to go? What do you think he thought he would get out of it? It's an event. <laughs> what? He lives in West Virginia. It's kind of funny. Right, yo, Matt. Okay, so uh, if you were in New York, when it was going on, I I live in New York. And you I'm had New York. The money. I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at how many people are viewing your your show right now. It's uh, not too many. Yeah. No. It's no. Money. No doubt but about it. If you it. did have the money, if you did have the money, and you were in New York, would you go? Probably not. I have better things to spend my money on than go to a... If you guys comped me and made I have the day free, sure, but I wouldn't have spent the money. And you're claiming that Peter Brimlow spent the money, so clearly he thought there was something worthwhile for him to get out of this to spend that type of money. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, tell you what, do you guys want to... Uh... <laughs> Why can't you ask that charming. question? Um, well, we have the uh, rare occasion... Um, I can switch off with the uh, vice president of the club. Oh, who's that? You want to hear from him? But, but sure. Well, who who are we talking about? What what what? The honorable <laughs> vice president Nathan. <laughs> Nathan? Who's Nathan? Do you guys know who this is? Vaguely. <laughs> oh, this is. How are you? Oh yeah, yeah. this guy. Yeah. I want to okay, so, make so, sure hello. it's recorded. Sure. So make what's... a tremendous sacrifice for all of you. I need to fumigate my ears after putting Lucian's AirPods into them. Okay. So what's your name? Full, full name? And, and you're the vice president of the New York uh, Young Republicans Club. What, what's your name, Nathan? What? I am uh, Nathan Berger. I'm the vice president of the New York Young Republican Club. You're actually cool. misstating it. And I think the SPLC did in their article as well. There's no S on Republican in our name. We've had the same name since 1912 when we were incorporated in New York State. Okay, so I will I will adjust we'll, we'll, wherever we'll it says. That. Yeah, um, so so uh, we were asking um, Lucian, who, who seemed to not, he doesn't want to answer this question. What do you think someone like Peter Brimlow got out of attending your event? Why would he have spent 400, 800, whatever he spent, the exact amount doesn't matter. I'm even giving it to you guys well, that he I wasn't the VIP. Is, how much did he spend? Do you have the receipt? I do have the receipt. I'm not going to give it to you. Okay. It'd be a violation of our privacy right. policy. No, you don't have to. Uh, the no, same way that we haven't published your receipt. Uh, but as you acknowledged, you bought a ticket, uh, two tickets. Uh, actually, I think someone else bought them for both of you, if I recall correctly. And that's totally fine. We turned 
we had single digit cancellation of tickets from this event uh the same way we do for most of our events uh we did no filtering for anyone um we issued every press pass that was requested over 20 uh free press passes were issued you would have gotten press passes if you requested them as well we th so mm -hmm. first of all uh you one of your speakers um bragged publicly that there was no uh mainstream media there and called out the press uh you know the lugan press without using that word i gotta say that um, is a burn so, on newsweek that is a I, burn on newsweek <laughs> I, I, at the end of the day we didn't filter what people said either we have a free speech policy that's published on our website and we respect other people and pretty much every sort of idea. And we see ourselves as a forum that enables open and free dialogue. Ah, I see. Okay. So, so on the question of free speech, um, you know, you think, uh, how do you feel about the idea of a total war that um, spreads out into the streets I don't with know other, with other American well, citizens? Well, I'm just curious. On. That's, that's, well, no, hold on. Your president said that. That's right? not what he said. That you is did what not said. call for a total war spilling out into the streets. You're you mischaracterizing like the quote? statement. No, you, well, you want us to read the up. quote? You want to read the quote? We can read the quote and you can deal with the actual quote and tell us what you think about it. We, we want to cross the Rubicon. We want total war. We must be prepared to do battle in every arena, in the media, in the courtroom, at the ballot box, and in the streets. If you want the audio of that, too, I got that, too. This is so the only language the left but understands. The language of pure and unadulterated power. How do you feel about that? I think Gavin's the right one to answer that. I don't know that I'm the right oh, one yeah. to he's your, he, he's, to he's exactly the president he of said. your group. He's the president of your group, though, isn't he? And it's a little. He is. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, if it were my group, I would say I wouldn't want anything to do with that personally. But I don't know. That's just me. Again, the broader context of the speech, outside of the quotes that you're making, was hmm. the idea of not ceding power by playing by conventional games and conventional approaches when other people have evolved their approaches. So the idea that Republicans are going to sit back and not engage in ballot harvesting, what Democrats do, that's not a winning strategy. And that's what Gavin was referring to. I see. Did, 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 well, he, well what about, what's the streets part of it? That's ballot harvesting? Going to the streets, walking door to door, knocking on doors, talking mm -hmm. to people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Electioneering. Okay. So, 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 Ga the, so Gavin the, Wax the in 2018. The precepts of campaigning. So Gavin Wax in 2018 uh, wrote a, a, a little a thing. This is, you have plenty of time to look into him since he's the president of your group. Uh, thing, right? We are all proud boys now and a sort of a defense of the proud boys. Um, how do you feel about that in the context of that statement? I don't see how it's relevant. You're, oh, you're yeah, looking well, at the yeah, four I mean, part. I no, do. I don't see how there's any how about that? I see. I know how it's relevant. It means. So it thing. means he's I know talking how it's about relevant. protesting. He's talking today about yeah, protesting. Yeah, yeah. It's a particular kind and of protesting. Engaging too. in. Yeah. So you one of your well, your main stage speaker talked about uh, talked about an armed insurrection and how that would have been successful. People with guns. How do you feel about that? This is for free speech policy. What about the people who died? Did they have free speech? I'm just curious. You mean, the one was killed by a cap you mean the one who was killed by the Capitol Police officer? Well, yeah, I mean, that happened okay, because that? of the How whole situation there, though. Speech? Does she have free speech? Does Ashley Babbitt have free speech now? Should she have been... But she doesn't she, because she was killed by a Capitol Police officer. Yeah, right, because correct. of the whole situation correct. there. She was put there because of correct. what happened. Yeah, She was, yes. Well, she chose to go there. I, the, the, I, I'm not sure what point you're trying to make. You're saying she deserved to die. I don't, I'm confused. What do you, like, no, I, I'm just saying is, what I'm saying is... Your main speaker talked about how an armed insurrection of, of the United States government would have been successful, and people cheered. Now, I ask you, the people who die in, in such an event, do, what, what free speech exists for them? Your question is so far off base. We I invited think, a sitting I don't think it's of off base at all. How people. about that? I don't think it's off base at all. OK, and I think the relevance of, of his, his comment about the Proud Boys. OK, I, don't play, you know, don't play dumb with me. OK, I, I'm sorry. Uh, the comment about the Proud Boys to ignore that is absolutely ridiculous. OK, the, the, the head of your the head of your organization 
wrote a piece called We Are All Proud Boys Now, all right? Proud, the, the Proud Boys have been declared a terror organization in, in multiple countries, all right? What's your point? Are you saying that they don't have My the point right is to uh-huh, let, 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 I want to hear what he has to say. Right to are you saying that are you no, saying that people inherent. don't have the right you to free assembly and that we should be suppressing arm- people's no, no. ability to gather and to peacefully I mean, no, protest but... and to take to the streets, which is something that We're is not talking about people used, protest. a commonly used phrase by leftists, by people across the political spectrum, as it should be. All right, Nathan, are, Nathan, but let's let's put it this way. Let's let's protest. even let's even put it this way though. Let's put this talking about peaceful protest. You're you're not talking about peaceful protest. Let's 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 put it this way though. All right, so protest because your speakers didn't. Okay, yeah. so hold on. Let's, <laughs> okay, let's 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 put it this way though. Okay, so if I'm a free speech warrior and I'm out there and I'm saying, you know, the KKK, those neo Nazis, they have a right to free speech. They I don't agree with them, but they can you know they could protest in the streets and obviously people could counter protest. It's it's an American right. People don't go out there though and then write an article saying, you know, uh, we are all neo Nazis. We are all the KKK now. I mean, this is a declaration of you being part, or not you, your uh, president or whoever uh, this person is. This person is saying that they are a proud boy now. I mean, there's a little bit of a difference there, don't you? Don't you see? Don't. don't what did you agree with that at the very least? I mean, I, I think that the, again, you're missing the context of that article. That Gavin wrote, which he's talked about subsequently on myriad occasions over the subsequent four years. So I'm not sure. The, the article was about how left wing and right wing groups were treated differently and how they were being approached by the media and attacked in different ways. And the point of saying, my understanding from speaking to him, and again, you should really talk to him about this, and I'm sure he'd be happy to speak oh, to you about it. I the point of it, the point of the article, my understanding, is that left-wing groups and right-wing groups receive different treatment, and that many people were being categorized like Proud Boys, were being classified as Proud Boys by the media establishment and by the courts and by judges as a result of the shift in the American psyche. I mean, we can listen. Let, let's not talk about someone who's not sitting here right now, specifically. Um, I, I to that I would say though, like you know, you had Marjorie Trump. Taylor Greene as the as the headlining speaker at your event. She's not even from New York, so why do you have her there? We have a lot of people who aren't from New York. Right, but she's so, a sitting co- member of Congress. Co- why co- is she co- not a sitting member of Congress? She's a sitting member of Congress who is who is synonymous with QAnon and, and the January sixth insurrection. I mean, she this is what I'm saying. You're, you're playing, with, with all, in all fairness, sir, you are you are playing playing quite dumb here. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's let let's let's talk about let's talk about. I want to get back to the question that I asked Lucian that he he tagged you in for to answer because he couldn't answer. Um, why do you think someone like Peter Brimlow was drawn to this event? Like, why would someone like him want to attend? What do you think he got out of it? What what what, what do you think his reasoning to go to this event was? Why don't you ask him that question? Why are you asking me? Well, I mean, aren't you interested in why your attendees go? Isn't this is this is like I'd want to know. This, not particularly, this is, I wasn't particularly interested in why you wanted to attend. I mean, but you know why they attended. You know why they attended. They wanted to write about the event so they could tell people about it. Like this is even basic stuff that like even non-political events do. They want to know why their attendees went. Um, this is like basic like surveying your your audience. You don't. You're not interested in why the, your attendees went, like what they wanted to get out of it, so you can better give them what they're Honestly, looking for. Honestly, from an analytic from an analytic perspective, we weren't particularly interested because of the from it, from the demand side, we weren't really at a deficit, so we didn't see the the benefit in doing major analytics on that. You know, um, you know, you know who, you know right, so, so let's talk you know about really in general. Like let's there, talk though. about in general then. What what are you your know who attendees? Really likes V-Dare? Jack Kozobik used to retweet Vidare all the time. 2017. You should ask him about it. So I, you should ask him about it again. I don't know. He's one of your speakers, why, man. Why, so, so, why so, should I? Okay, I so let's let's talk why about what you it? can answer as the vice. Well, I, 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 I see what you're saying. Huh? Yeah, why? why? He's just one of my speakers. We just gave him an award. We just gave Bumble Jack Pizovic an award. Yeah, yeah, why bother? Let, can, can, can I ask you? Can I ask you? Everyone can speak. Jack Pizovic can speak. Marjorie Taylor Greene can speak. Matthew Tierman can speak. Uh, the 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 uh, election denier Raheem, because everyone can speak here. Michael, right? Michael, Every, Michael. If everyone. you want to speak, 
everyone Michael, from if Ahim you want to speak to if Jack you speak to one of our events, Michael, you are welcome to come. Oh, I, you, should, you should I take up. To you should do I that. To say. <laughs> no, I but let, you're welcome uh, to do it. Huh, huh, Nathan, Nathan's here. I want to ask questions that Nathan could answer now. Um, you know, so what in, in general? What do you think the attendees? We don't have to speak about a specific person, but I think this, I think a general question like this is something you could answer. What is the general attendee to the this this sort of event? What are they looking to get out of this? I think they were looking for a Saturday night with people of similar, in a broad macro sense, political perspective, where they got to put on a tuxedo or a gown and go spend time with people and enjoy socializing with them. So yeah. you're right. saying so, that your political wait wait so you're saying that your political views then are similar to Peter Brimlow's in a broad macro sense. Am I getting that correct? No, oh. no, you're not. You just said that. You you no, no. I was speaking about the individual to the median attendee, not the individual to a selected okay. person that you okay. identify. Okay. okay, You've engaged in a particularly heinous journalistic attack. Okay. By okay. Oh yeah. Oh, and there's okay. zero reason why who, you should who do Who won the no, no, no. 2020 election? I think it's pretty clear who the president of the United States is right now. It's Joe Biden. Right, okay. And did he win it fair and square? He won the election, and he was seen fair in the square? presidency, and he was inaugurated. Did he win the election fairly? He received a majority of the electoral votes and was a seat Real votes? seated in accordance. Did he receive... Real votes. Did he win the election? Well, yes, he obviously fairly. won the majority of the popular votes. Okay. Real votes in every state. I, I don't know what you mean by real votes. Was there fraud in the 2020 election? Widespread fraud? I, I have no idea if there was widespread fraud or well, not. You don't know. You don't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing, man. Um, every one of these people from Peter Brimlow to or all the way across have pushed repeatedly the lie and it is a lie that there is widespread fraud in the 2020 election, which led in turn to uh, a, a, an attack on the U.S. Capitol in which Ashley Babbitt died, of course. And if we keep this stuff up, more people are going to die. And that's your event, man. Those are the people at your event. What's your point? My, my point is inherent. My point is what I said just now. Okay, so wait, that wasn't, I, I have, so I have a few more. Believe, if you believe that, we, that Joe Biden won a free and fair election, and there was not widespread fraud. Then why are you having all these people who's primarily who are primi primarily associated with pushing politically charged disinformation at your event? And so the thing is, that's why I'm like, like I know you like I'm not stupid, all right? Okay, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not dumb, all right? You 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 can't take a turd in front of me and tell me it's a, a bowl of chocolate pudding. Every single one of these people that you had at this event pushed this info about the 2020 election. You know that Joe Biden won it fairly. Why would you have these people speak at your event? And why would you be part of a group that did? I, I don't even understand the premise of your question, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty simple I, question. So, <laughs> that's the question, man. That's the question, dude. I, it's just that's not true. Question. Uh, what does what does what, does what does what does what does true okay bumble jack i'm sorry excuse me bumble jack Pizovic did not push disinfo about the 2020 did bumble jack do that or not i don't know what any individual person did or didn't do, how does tell okay, you oh, 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 okay. how does someone okay because i want to ask i want to ask some more general did. questions here how does someone like bumble jack get picked to uh jack Pizovic? how did he get picked to win this uh award like what was the process like what what did you consider about jack when presenting him with this award So there were a number of factors that we looked at uh, in terms of all the awards. Uh, our awards have gone to a number of interesting people over a period of decades. They, many of these awards are quite old. Some of them are newer. Mm. And I, I can't speak the specifics of the selection of Jack's process, the, the process by which Jack was selected. But I think he was a person who's been involved in the... Uh, review of the Hunter Biden laptop, which was a an absolutely heinous example of the media and the government colluding to suppress a story. And 
I think that was something that merited attention and interest. And I think it's something that people were uh, wanted to hear more about. Where, where and I think you... that as we see as we see these these documents come out of Twitter and continue to come out of Twitter, we see more and more that what transpired around this was upsetting. But would you, you know that you know that the only thing to come out of those do- Twitter documents, which again is being dropped by Elon Musk, Matt Taibbi, Barry Weiss, uh, I think Michael Schellenberg. So these aren't people who are. We we could we could argue whether they are uh, full blown conservatives or if they're you know uh, tr- tr- uh, truth chasing uh, independent journalists. But the the choice is clear that this is a legit drop and not like some left wing mainstream media. You you understand that the only thing of any co- collusion that we've seen so far is that the Joe Biden campaign in 2020 before the election even happened is that he requ- his campaign requested that they take down some nude photos of Hunter Biden. Like, we know there's been absolutely no evidence shown yet. And this is inarguable. Even Matt Taibbi hasn't said this yet. There was no Joe Biden campaign even asking for the New York Post story to be taken down, for example. There was no requests shown, no documents dropped. I mean, um, if you're arguing that the nude photos of Hunter Biden shows some wild collusion... I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I would argue well, we against that. No, by, that's we not. Don't, we don't need to get sidetracked by Hunter Biden. I mean, you had Jack Dezobic. I mean, Jack Dezobic has has, has has brags about his ties to the Oath Keepers. He's he's associated with the Proud Boys. I mean, this, this is what I'm saying. This is this, this is extraordinarily disingenuous. You're not being honest uh, with us, and it's obvious. I mean, I, quite frankly, I'll be honest with you, Matt. I don't really want to talk to this guy anymore. If that's okay, um, I'm sorry. No, I don't because you're because you're. you're I not mean, an, you're, you're not an honest person. I am being honest. I, I, I yeah, think yeah. it's oh, quite we unfair just, we that you're just mischaracterizing to honor Jack We just wanted to honor Jack Pizovic. I mean, you're not, you're, you're, not, you're not a truthful person, in my opinion. I don't and think you, you've been particularly truthful either, though, is the problem. I don't I, think that your characterization of your entry to our event, which we knew about and permitted, was fair. Uh, and we brought I think a ticket, that, man. You let us in. You didn't kick us out. No, oh, I know. We, we didn't. We we, so we how is it, how is it every, we, we you're, you're pitching this. You're pitching this as some sort of undercover operation. No, we didn't. Oh, no, I, we did. I, 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 I did that as a joke to to promote the live stream. They never did that in their piece. That was my own personal yeah. like. I, Matt, I would just say I, I would. I do not want to speak to this guy anymore. If that's okay. Okay. I, that's uh, listen, my personal I, thing. I know you're a very open dialogue. I, I, I understand keep lying and I'm it's it's I find it a little distasteful. Nathan, Nathan I, I appreciate like Mike Michael said, I'm I'm someone who is a little bit more. <laughs> uh, He's a little bit more open. I, I don't like I don't like bullshit is the thing. So That's my, just I'm not lying thing. and I'm not bullshitting you. I, I, yeah, listen, I yeah, do. Oh, I yeah. do. We don't know how Jack. Jack we got to honor Jack Pizovic. We've given awards to all these people and now we're giving them to Bumble Jack Pizovic, who's most famous for doing pizza game. I wonder how that happened. Well. Who picks? Wait, who, okay, picks so do, who picks? Who picks? Who picks? How the? Re- I appreciate you coming on, Nathan. As Lucian comes over, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, um, I'm open to talking with you anytime about more of this. Um, let's let's. I guess uh, we could, we could end it here. Lucian has something final to say here. What what does he want to do over here? I. I don't know what Lucian's saying. <laughs> okay. So is there, you know, I, 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 let me ask you one last question here and then, then we'll let you go. And if sure. you want to talk with me more another day, please, you, you, Lucian has my contacts now. Um, who is involved in picking someone like Jack Posobiec? You said, you no, know, you aren't involved. So who, who are the individuals involved? Like, can you tell us who, like, who was involved in this specific voting process for this Jack Posobiec uh, uh, award that was given to him? I, off the top of my head, I don't know who was involved in it. Um, yeah, but who's know. okay? Who? But who? Who? Who, 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 who generally? Who's generally? Jack is this? Is, is, is I don't look. I, I don't know. It could, I, be I, could be anybody. Is this like? Is this like? Is this? Is this like? I have this, like, I mean, I like, like, no Okay, but is this like an Academy Awards type thing where it's like a bunch of people within the industry? Like, are we talking like like did Steve Bannon, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, these type of people? Did they get a vote I, on this, or I, I, how does this work? I, I just want to. I do want to correct one point that was made. Uh, I think Michael and Hannah didn't see that Roger Stone was there, and they had some sort of fallacious hypothesis that he wasn't there because of some sort of alleged feud with Steve Bannon. Both of them were know. present in the know. room. Okay. He was there. 
if, All right, if you so, didn't see him, okay, so that, we, that was on we, you because he was there. <laughs> All right. And, I think, and, and by the way, by the way, I think if you do have questions on things like the processes, Gavin's more than happy to speak to you. Okay, sounds good. Actually, I, so, so I, I do have I do have one question actually because I have not I, I have mostly just been sitting here. So if you can, um, ask, uh, oh sorry, go uh, let let Hannah ask her question. Yeah, yeah and then and okay. then everyone let so, let Nathan answer it. Okay. All right. So you were the one who opened for Marjorie Taylor Greene, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so when you were doing that, I, I have some notes pulled up from that. You said roughly that we must have an even greater admiration for those who stand up to the regime, to the anti-American forces that conspire against an agent groaning us out of distance with the, um, and then this is an automatic transcriber, so it gets a little confusing. But specifically, the anti-American forces. Um, I mean, she supports a, she made a joke about an armed insurrection against the US government. Isn't that anti-American? She supported the insurrection, which was basically about, I mean, overthrowing so a sitting I, president. So I, her speech was after I introduced her. So let's, yeah, I guess keep the sequence. But you knew in mind. when you invited her that she had said positive things about this insurrection, right? I, I, I don't think that you're characterizing what she said correctly. And I don't think that you're interpreting what I intended correctly. Um, the, Regime that I was referring to wasn't in place at the time that she said that. Obviously, regime is an inflammatory word. That's kind of the point of making that kind of introduction is to rile up the crowd. Um, but by and large, I don't know that there was anything there that was particularly out of the ordinary. Wait, what, what's your interpretation? What, what, what's your yeah, what's your interpretation you of her saying that us, if it was up to us, it would have been armed? That's West. what I'm confused about. Yeah, what what's your interpretation of her saying uh, if it was you know if we put this together, it would have been armed? That's that's what 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 was your take on that? It's not a remark I would have made. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Not, yeah, she's your she's your headlining speaker, and, dude. So yeah. I mean, you guys were yeah. using her for advertising. We didn't, we didn't review her remarks. She was speaking extemporaneously. And she was, if you look at the full context of that quote, which I'm pretty sure you have, she, uh, she has a broader context. Oh, okay. uh, I, 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 I think, I, I, I think saying that you would have made that remark is a much better thing to go with than uh, <laughs> the second thing you added. Um, Nathan, Lucian, I appreciate you joining us and uh, taking the time. Um, would be happy to do this again another time, but we've already gone like, I think we probably talked now for, for an hour or something, 45 minutes maybe. Um, so uh, have a great night. Thank you for, for uh, joining us here on the feed. Two sure things. Have a good night. Good night. All right. Um, I appreciate you guys doing that with <laughs> okay. me because that was I thought that was uh, I thought that was very interesting. I honestly honestly thought it was worth you, it for some I appreciate some certain things. Matt, I know you have a big better tolerance for these things than I do, but I'm sorry that that was the the level of bullshit there was was driving me. At least Lucian was completely off the rails, and I can enjoy but, that. But in you some also ways. have to you also have to take like sometimes you just have to take like I know like the, in full it was frustrating, but there were certain lines. It may have just been like thirty seconds, but I mean. That Peter Brimlow line as to why people like Peter Brimlow go to hang out with people who have similar political interests. Uh, what was yeah, the exact that is thing a very they said? Interesting... I mean, that's. I mean, to me, that that makes a call like that entirely worth it. Honestly, I mean, right there is all you need. It makes the whole thing. <laughs> it made was, the whole yeah, thing I, worthwhile. I, you're I right. That was a good line. That, you're, that was... you're, you're right, but I mean, I, I didn't come in here in a reporting mode. I came here to talk to you on a live stream, so. I hear you. No, I know. I I'm always, that way. I'm always ready to go. <laughs> well, if he does want the broader context of the Marjor Ta Marjorie Taylor Greene quote, though, I have it pulled up. And you know what? It doesn't make the quote look better. 
It doesn't. Um, so again, this is coming out of a uh, transcriber. Um, so it gets a little bit muddled, but I'll do my best here. Um, so she's essentially, she starts talking about how they shouldn't be losing. Um, and at, you know, a few seconds before she gets into all of this, she at one point says, I want you to all, I want you all to know something. Alex Jones was right. So that's great. Um, just, just nice yeah. intro to where Alex she's going Jones next. Alex Jones was right. The Sandy Hook uh, guy was right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're losing. We're losing. But we don't have to be losing. Okay? It's totally different. This is something that we can all win when we decide that their narrative is wrong and their narrative doesn't have to control us anymore. That's what I've been doing since I came to Washington. Really, I have. I came to Washington, I swear, I swear in on January 3rd. I get accused of giving insurrection tours, which I thought was hilarious, because I couldn't even find the cap bathroom at the Capitol. Uh -huh. Then January 6th happens. And next thing you know, I organized the whole thing along with Steve Bannon here. And I will tell you something. Steve Bannon and I organized that. We would have won. And two... Uh, this is when it gets a little muddled, I think, because there's clapping. Um, they say the whole thing was planned. And I'm like, are you kidding me? A bunch of conservative Second Amendment supporters within the Capitol without guns, and they think that we organized that? I don't think so. <sighs> like... <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I, I recalled the, I mean, I don't, I, you have the whole transcript now. I, I don't remember. I'm not sure if I read it or not. I wish I remembered the Alex Jones comment. I mean, that's something to certainly ask about as well. Do you, do you think, do you, do you agree Alex Jones was right? I mean, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was illuminating and I'm, I'm, I appreciate uh, the both of you, uh, letting me uh, bring uh, Lucian on who in turn gave it to someone who leads up the organization. I, 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 I thought it went, uh, I thought it went well, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. It was fine. A uh, little surprise. I thought Lucian uh, was, you know, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, they don't really have any explanation for what they did there. And we didn't even get into the ultra nationalist European figures that were there. Right. Um, you got it's, it's difficult. We're not like when I'm not prepared for this. It's just sort of like, you know, OK, you, yeah, all this is like in your head seems to make sense. And yet you have this uh, Austrian Freedom Party, which was founded by Nazi SS officers. Um, you have members of that at your event. I mean, you're surprised that people find this scandalous. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the, it's it's to me to me it was like the the thing that uh, was immediately stuck out to me was, and this was I think Lucian started with this too. Like, why were you guys there? I mean, we know why you were there. You you wrote about it. You made it quite clear why you were there. I would love to know. Uh, and this is the question they wouldn't answer because I think we we know the answer. Why does someone like Peter Brimelow? I, that's why I kept asking that question. Why does someone like Peter Brimelow think this? attending this event is a good investment to take the time to go. Like you mentioned, he's from West Virginia. That's not a, it's not a short trip. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's got to pay 400, 800, whatever dollars. Cause to me that, that says a lot more than him even be being the VIP in a certain way, because VIP, if he was brought as a VIP, you know, maybe he could have been someone's <laughs> guest. They could have said that, but no, the fact that he paid directly, he expects to get something out of this event. There's something there for him, whether, um, it's straight from the New York young Republican club, uh, or if it's from the particular guests, um, are all of his friends going? Why are all of Peter Brimlow's friends attracted to this event? Like, they, they, to me, like that's should be something that if you were, uh, in their shoes, as they claim, you know, in, in the shoes they claim they were in, you would be interested in knowing. But that interest didn't seem to be there because I don't think, I don't think they needed to find out. I think, uh, you know, Hannah, it's quite clear. Hannah, you, you observed uh, many people uh, throughout yes. the night walking up and introducing themselves to Peter Brimlow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. I mean, it was. Like I, like I said, it was mostly young men. Uh, they would go up to his table 
um, table 29, I believe. Uh, and they were talk to him specifically so it was it was pretty clear when it was him specifically and not just Lydia because say he would be standing up talking to someone um talking to a couple of young guys just going up to him I mean it was pretty clear that he was not say in a situation like ours where either he was avoiding talking to people um or having more kind of antagonistic argumentative conversations um it they seem collegial i mean and it happened throughout the night i they were there i think he and lydia probably got there around i have to check my text messages i guess for the timestamp but probably got there around 7 40 7 30 7 40 somewhere about about and they were there Past the time we left. I don't know if they went to this after party. I'd be a little surprised, but I, do, I think it's I past. Do, yeah. I think it's past uh, Peter's bedtime. But uh, <laughs> I do. I, I, it's New I, York, I, though. It's New York. Right, right. I do like this uh, uh, this uh, fictional scenario I just made up in my mind where you, the both of you were welcomed as well. Like, oh, look, it's Hannah and Michael from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Ask me anything, well, please. The, well, the Steve Bannon, nice to meet you. I was not giving us <laughs> press passes. The, the, I wouldn't the, give me a press pass. Well, the, the, if they would give us press pass. Well, I mean, they should give it. They should give it got, to. They've had like three days of negative press they've had to deal with since. What I would say that is really, yeah, um, yeah I mean, they'd be idiots. Uh, and, and you could argue that they are idiots because they didn't bet us in the first place. But um, my, my point about w w counter of like, oh, we knew you were there all along. Oh, we're big brain, uh, you know, brain genius. We, we this is we're playing like five dimensional chess guys. We wanted you there uh, or whatever. Um, uh, we love having, you know, everybody write articles about how scary we are. Uh, which people are doing now all over the place uh, as a result of our reporting. Um, the thing I keep going back to is we were thrown out of that place uh, and created no disturbance. Now, now, whatever, whatever, uh, you know, sympathizer is on, in your YouTube chat of like, oh, he was disrupting everything. I was just having a conversation. Oh, you with mean, that. you okay. mean like Vish himself, who's now in the <laughs> chat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vish totally not bothered. Vish, Vish, who has palpable stress breath, uh, yeah, is not is is in the live chat, and he wants to huff and puff. We loved having him there, and we, you know, I handled him, and Hayden is posting his L's and whatever else. I mean, if you wanted us there, why why would you why would you throw us out at that point? You know, invite us to the after sense. party. Yeah, invite us to the I after mean, party, where apparently. Stuff was happening. I don't know. It's it's, like... it's 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 so fatuous. And no, the thing is that they, that they're so they're so incapable of seeing what people who are outside the bubble see so clearly. That is the that's the thing I keep going back to. You agree with that, Hannah? Yeah. I mean, I think part of it is because they're all stuck in this little blob together. I mean, they're not really. They don't necessarily interact. I, I mean, I guess I can't really speak for that. They, at events like this, it makes it pretty clear that they want, they're going to hate me for this, a safe space um, where they can talk about their ideas freely, express them without fear of negative press. And I think that's, you know, when I, when I come back to that corporate press line that Mike was talking about a little earlier, um, that's kind of what it means is they want they want to be free of that and they want to have a space away from that. Um, I, I prefer to call it that they're I prefer to, Yeah. Yeah. I, I prefer to say that they were uh quarantining from the woke mind virus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if, if they're so not bothered by this, if they're, if they're so not bothered by this, why are they you know coming onto the stream? It's absolutely bizarre. Um, I, I, I appreciate that uh, from my standpoint. <laughs> super chat. Super yeah. chat gets Although I wish I wish Ashley St. Clair had the, the, the guts to call in. That one was disappointing because I myself 
have personally had an interaction with her before. So that would have been, I would have liked to ask her questions about that book that she wrote and how she would categorize yeah, what, it. What was she doing with Jack Pozobic at, uh, on, on, and she also went with Jack Pozobic to like a, a, like a, some sort of gun range with like a helicopter one uh, in, um, maybe it was like, it was like summer 2020 for like multiple days. I don't remember. I was, I, I, I did make a mental note of it. <clears throat> I'd be curious. Yeah. I'm curious to ask yeah. her about, about her, you know, what she does with your bumble jack when she's hanging out. All right, Michael. <laughs> Listen, this 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 was gonna be uh, this was gonna be fun and interesting, uh, even when it was just the three of us, and uh, yeah. it got even more, uh, in my opinion, fun and interesting. Uh, impromptu discussion uh, with uh, the New York Young Republican Club. Um, as always, this show is open for anyone to call in. I even take calls in the second half of the show. Um, Hannah and Michael, uh, your work is always appreciated. Um, where can people find, uh, unless there's something else you wanted to say, um, where can people find you online and, and your work? Uh, please, the, the floor, the floor is always is yours. You go first, Hannah. Wow, me? Me? Okay, yeah. fine. All right. Well, uh, I frequently write for uh, Southern Property Law Center's Hate, Hate Watch blog. Um, you can also find me on Twitter uh, if you're so inclined, so long as that website stays up at Hannah Gaze. I'm also on Mastodon at Hannah Gaze, and I just signed up for Post. I got to I got to say you're the you're I'm the first you're shit. the first person to drop a mastodon and uh post uh you know uh promotion on the show so you've made history. Uh <laughs> I, I I I'm trying. I don't know. I I don't know where the lights going to be on in Twi uh, on Twitter and like I mean for for me know, I've I've, I've taken I <laughs> right I've taken I've taken the position of Rorschach in on the Watchmen when, with with Twitter. Like uh, Elon, I'm not trapped in there with Elon Musk. He's trapped in there with me, so I'm not leaving right. Twitter. I'm gonna, when, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Musk gonna take my blue check. I don't want my blue check. Anymore. Yeah, he could, he could do whatever the hell he wants. It. Just take it from me. He could do whatever he wants. I mean, he if he get, if get he bans me, give me all the if he if he bans me, give me all the press too that I'll this guy's like blocking my free speech. I'll feel like a, I'll feel like a pure poster without the check. Right, right, right. I will post like three times as hard. All right. There you go. <laughs> my Twitter, my Twitter is at Michael E. Hayden. At Michael E. Hayden. Um, I don't, I'm not, I have a mess that I'm not using that yet. Or Poe, you come get me when there's, a, when there's an issue with that. And I would just say to everyone who is here, if you are taking the Northeast regional train anywhere in that corridor and you see the options, they run every, you know, they're typically ones multiple times per hour. You see train 88, wait 20 minutes, take the next train. <laughs> Don't take train 88. That is what you should learn from this story. And on that note, <laughs> at Michael E. Hayden, and then it's, it's no, seriously, sblcenter.org backslash, back, backslash hate watch. Um, I got a story coming out about Bidair. It's a Christmas story. Who doesn't want a, a, a like a little like Antifa Christmas like story? Hell, Everybody loves it. Chestnuts roasting oh, on an open yes. fire. Look at this. Bidair, open on I'm your screen. Here. Before I go on vacation and lose my I, my vacation, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna be here um, with uh, at Antifa headquarters. With some, in sunny yeah, Los Angeles, some, California. I'm gonna I'm gonna be enjoying some <laughs> some bourbon, and uh, and and spending some time with loved ones of all uh, of all walks of life, all all kinds of loved ones. And uh, and I just want to wish everybody a merry Christmas and and happy Hanukkah and uh, Kwanzaa and every holiday uh, that comes this month and beyond. And also, if we're, I assume I'm not gonna be on the stream again, so happy New Year as well. And Matt, it was great seeing you, buddy. As always, always happy a pleasure. Happy holidays, folks. 
Take care, both of you. And uh, looking forward to having Michael on again, obviously, as always. But also you, Hannah, as a first-time guest. Yeah. But, uh, you know, unlike uh, my friend Michael Brooks, who said you were going to be a friend of the show and just had you on apparently one time, I'm going <laughs> to have you on more. <laughs> in, in, my defense, in my defense, it was my first year of grad school, and I was so stressed out. So yeah, <laughs> I, I will say I uh, when you when you when you dropped that that tweet explaining that uh, I I had a good laugh at at a, at a very hard time. So thank you for that one. I appreciated that. Thank you. Thank you. We're saying Merry Christmas again on Doom. Take All care. Right. Yeah. Bye. All right, guys. All right. Good night. All right, folks. I'm gonna go to the second half of the show. There's people calling. Stick around. I'm gonna take your call. Just give me a minute to. Uh, to wrap up the first half of the show. Um, all right. So to support this show, go to patreon.com slash Matt Binder. Um, your monthly subscri paid subscription to the show helps me continue to create even more wonderful, interesting, sometimes even impromptu content like we just did tonight right here. Um, you can also support this show by subscribing to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Matt Binder. Also, Follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Matt Binder. And if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, connect your Amazon account to your Twitch account and you get a free Twitch Prime subscription every month. What does that mean? It means that Amazon gives you a free subscription, as in free for you, to give to your favorite creator, which pays them. So basically, it's like you're taking a small little cut from what you pay Amazon and you're forcing Amazon to give it to to me or whatever creator you give it to. I'm telling you because I hope you give it to me. But just give it to someone. It's better than going into Jeff Bezos' pocket. He's, he's made enough already. Um, so that's twitch.tv slash Matt Binder. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Matt Binder. Uh, check out the podcast version of the show at doomedcast.com. Um, stay away from the woke mind virus, of course. Very, 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 uh, big season for that. This is woke mind virus season, folks. You can catch it very easily. Make sure you get your vaccination for the woke mind virus. Um, you will be seeing me, uh, before Christmas because next week, uh, I have a wonderful show planned for you all with Emma Viglin's first appearance. Uh, Emma Viglin of the Majority Port and uh, TYT fame. We're making her very first appearance on this show. I mean, you see me and v Emma every week together, but it's the first time she's coming on this show. It's going to be a, d a whole different uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, relationship, on-screen relationship going on there. Uh, it'll be the exact same as when we're on every Thursday, I'm sure. Uh, also, uh, what else? Uh, we're going to go to the second half of the show now. If you are uh, just a freebie podcast listener, you just listen to uh, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, this is where I say goodbye to you. Uh, but if you are watching the live stream, uh, stick around because you're not going anywhere. The stream is going to stay open. Um, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you'll also get this material too, obviously. Um, just give me a few minutes to uh, say goodbye to the, uh, the freebies. Uh, see you next time on Doomed Freebie listeners. We are back on the show. This is the post show uh, for Doomed with Matt Binder. I am your host, the name in the title, Matt Binder. Um, let's take this call. This person's been trying to call in for a while now. Let's take this call right now. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? 
Hey, I'm Nick. I have called before. Uh, I am from Texas. Hey, Nick from and Texas. What would you like to talk about? Honestly, first of all, uh, the Lucian thing uh, from tonight, <laughs> which as a gay man, um, I, I find it very interesting that uh, all of these um, minority types are flocking towards right wing people. Uh, who who tend to be magnets for genuine uh, Nazis or neo-Nazis. Uh, I find it very interesting that they flock towards those types because um, you are not them. <laughs> it's that meme that you see on Twitter. What is he wearing? You are not in, on the team. Uh, <laughs> you know, at the end stage of that I ideology – you are not that person. You are not that group that they are catering to. Uh, and it, it, it reminds me of Candace Owens uh, and Herschel Walker, Christian Walker, all of those types. It's like you can you can espouse their ideas, but at the end of the day, you will never be them in their in their own eyes. That that ideology will never accept you fully. Because of the way that you are, you are a minority, you are a marginalized group. Um, so I, I just find that so interesting. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. It was it was it's 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 a it's an interesting dynamic. But, you know, they uh, don't think that's an issue, I guess. Um like you know, Lucian easily just threw threw aside the fact that uh, you know Nick Fuentes' uh, fans apparently, according to him, were calling him the uh, you know the f word, the gay slur that begins with an f. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, some, some for some people that's just not the biggest issue. Obviously, uh, that's an issue you could put to the side for now, I guess, because things aren't quite there yet. But eventually, if, if they didn't get their way, maybe it would be an issue for people like Lucian, you know? Yeah, I think that if if the uh, if the ideology of people like Nif Nick Fuentes comes to fruition, they would toss those people aside in an instant. Right. And that's something that people like that and Candace Owens don't understand. Maybe they do. And maybe they're just selling out to make money. Well, but yeah, I mean, I don't know about they. I, I don't know about Lucian because I I don't know what his deal is. Um, but with Candace Owens, I mean, it's clear it's a it's a she's been very successful. She's very very well off, I'm sure, from all the money she's been making with this turn. I mean, we know what she did before this in 2016. She was starting a anti racist cyber bullying uh, nonprofit organization uh, because she received she she literally worked with the NAACP to uh, sue sue uh, the the school she was attending. Because she said she was receiving uh, racist abuse from uh, her classmates or people, other uh, people who attended the school. Um, and, you know, she got a, a nice little payday out of that. Um, but wasn't, you know. It was, she, it was she, like $16,000, I believe. Yeah, but obviously she's, she's made a lot more doing the right wing turn. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what's in these people's hearts or whatever. I don't really – I don't care about that. But what they espouse is what I care about because that's what affects people. And, um, you know, they show exactly who they are when they do these things. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me if it's a grift or not. I mean, obviously it's important to point out the grifts uh, so people understand when someone is like bald-faced, like scheming, scheming to, to, you know, make money off of them. Um, but in terms of like how they really feel or who they really are, I don't give a shit. I care about what they're, what they're spouting and what they're putting out into the world. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they put out bad, bad well, things. I and mean, yeah, I think that's why at least Candace uh, Owens, you, again, you, I don't know. I don't know yes. who else specifically. I mean, Lucian went on Nick Fuentes' show and, you know, he could say they debated about things, but I also – and I don't have the – Kevin listened to the episode or whatever. But um, from what I'm seeing here from out.com uh, when they wrote about this, it, it says uh, Wintrich, uh, who is Lucian, Lucian Wintrich and Nick Fuentes discussed supposed genetic differences between races, noting that the United States was specifically saying we want the shittiest immigrants in the entire world to flood our country. I mean – 
that's not the type of uh, uh, things I want to espouse, to be quite frank. I think that's uh, the, that's not the type of thing people should espouse, I should say. Um, it's also not the type of thing I want to espouse because I don't believe that. Um, that's, you know, but that's who some people are. Well, what can you do about it? Yeah, I agree. And I think that's the reason why you latched onto the uh, Candace Owens point is that um, she is actually a grifter, whereas anyone that shows up in the Nick Fuentes podcast or or whatever his his thing is, um, they're not really a grifter because they stand to make no money off of that because he has no viewers. OK, so well, I think oh, yeah, that's, that's that's a good. No, I mean, Lucian, in many ways, I mean, he pointed out how not many people were watching my stream. They were about at the peak. I think they were like 500 people watching. I don't, I'm not under the, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't stream under the belief that I have a, a large live streaming audience or anything. Um, it's, I outwardly say it all the time how uh, I have a, <laughs> I have a very small yet tight uh, regular viewership. Um, so, I mean, him pointing that out doesn't bother me. I mean, in many ways, uh, Lucian probably mirrors that on the right. He probably, like you said, is a, uh, more of a true believer because he's been doing this for a while. And, you know, he I'm, I pulled up his Twitter account when he DM'd me. He only has about 25,000, 28,000, I think, maybe, followers. Um, I, I have close to 100,000 on Twitter. Uh, but in the big picture, I'm also a very small audience. Uh, I, that's how you could tell that I'm a true believer, maybe. I'm not making money off of being a, a left-wing commentator or whatever you want to call me. Um, so, I mean... This is obviously, I think you could tell this is, I mean, I've been doing this now for uh, over a decade when I started, when I was working on the Sam Cedar show, the majority report, um, wasn't making a lot of money there. I can tell you that. That's why I had to leave the show when I had a kid because I needed to make more money. Um, this is who, what I believe. And I'm sure in many ways, that's what Lucian believes. Like you said, I agree. And honestly, I kind of called in to see what you had on the docket because I am a person who um, has in the, in the past 10 years of my life has shifted more left wing. Um, but I have been a, uh, a criminal background checker for about 14 years. Um, and so I've, I've been heavily into the criminal justice reform uh, type of belief so far um I, I just i just wanted to know what you think about um criminal justice reform and how it pertains to um you know the right winger belief that you know like right wingers think that homeless people or or uh drug addicts deserve to be in prison forever and and that's all they think about you know criminal justice reform whereas there are so many other issues that actually matter towards uh the the uh sustaining of society and and the betterment of society than just like people that are addicted to drugs like that that that's just completely absurd i mean i had this conversation i don't know if you listened on uh on the night of the midterm elections i was on lauren chen's odyssey stream for the right wingers who are, are watching still, uh, obviously I'm someone who is always open for discussion with uh, anyone. I was invited to Lauren Chen's Odyssey stream. I was on there with a uh, Robbie Starstruck, Starbuck, whatever his name is. I was on there with Michael Tracy. Um, the Destiny showed up. Uh, ben Burgess, um, Sean Fitzgerald or Fitzpatrick, I can't remember his name, but that's the guy I want to bring up here, Sean. He brought up how, you know, he, he apparently lives in New York and he was talking about like the urban decay and the blight. And I was like, well, that's like just that's just that's very unspecific language. What are you talking about exactly? Um, and he wouldn't go there at first. And I said, no, you, he kept saying like the decay or blight or whatever. And I was like, no, specifically give me what you're talking about. These words don't mean anything. Give me exactly the issue that you're bringing up. And he goes to homeless people. He says homeless people. And I was like, well, I mean, that's an interesting way to discuss human beings who are out on the streets because they, they can't afford homes, uh, an apartment, or um, they uh, have mental health issues. 
what do you think we should do with them? And he said they should be taken off the streets. And I was like, well, first of all, that doesn't sound very, this doesn't sound very uh, liberty and freedom. Uh, you want to uh, force these people off the streets for just being out all night or sleeping on a bench? That doesn't seem right. Uh, but he, he said we should arrest them. And I was like, okay, how does that solve the homeless problem? And he was like, you know, they're off the streets. And I was like, what do you think happens to them? Do you think they spend, you think they're in jail for life for sleeping on a bench? They get released and they're right back where they are and they keep doing it over and over again. They got nothing to lose. They got no homes. They got no money to pay tickets or whatever. They just keep doing the same thing and it doesn't matter because they're homeless. Again, they got nothing to lose. They got to live somewhere. So it doesn't matter how many times you jail them. If you don't help them, they're never going to get out of that situation. And thus your, your problem with them doesn't get solved. And he just wouldn't, wouldn't give into a solution. He just, his solution was just to keep arresting them. Um, they, you know, that's what it's about. Um, you know, he even said how Giuliani and Bloomberg were, were great on this issue. Well, all they did was just arrest people and keep them off the streets that way. And because they did this, I guess because you have a certain amount of them in prison at one time, it looks like less. But guess what? Those people get let out as other people are arrested. You want to just keep this cycle going? I mean, if that's who you are, sure. Uh, but I mean, if you really care about solving this problem, you need to solve the issues. And the issues are, um, number one, you need to provide these people with housing. You need to provide these people with enough money to be able to get to the point where they could afford things that enable them to get a job. They need an address. They need um, you know, presentable clothing for an interview or just for work or in general, even if not even for presentableness or whatever. Uh, if they work in a kitchen, they need you know, work clothes. Um, also, if the reason they're out there is mental health issues, then guess what? You need to provide them with free mental health services. Um, and you can't force these things unless... They are a threat to themselves or others. Um, if they are, then okay. I mean, then you can do something about it. But if they're not, there's nothing you can do about it. That's freedom and liberty, baby. I mean, that's what you guys espouse. Yeah, and and something that I think is is very uh, instrumental to the co this conversation is is. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the laws that are intrinsic to different states and how different states deal with this stuff is um, I, I've been trained to do criminal background checks for over 35 states in this country. And I can tell you all of them are very, very different in terms of their laws and their penal codes and how things are written. So um, it's it's very interesting how uh, I guess f for legal terms I will call homeless people indigents. That is how uh, they legally are referred to as indigents, people that cannot pay their court costs or pay for a lawyer. Uh, they have a public defender and they cannot pay their court costs. They're they're referred to legally as indigents. Um, and it's interesting that we have like a separate class of people legally in in literal legal jargon across this entire country. They are referred to as indigents that cannot pay for their fucking legal services. Sorry for cursing. No, that's um, fine. It's, it's very interesting to me that um, there's literally classist language that refers to people that cannot afford for legal services that are trying to defend themselves in the public court of law. And they're, they're supposed to be as a constitutional right, given a public defender that can defend them. But at the end of the day, if they have no prospects, that public defender may not make them look very well in court because they have no prospects. Do you see what I'm saying? So it, it, it it's almost like the, the entire legal system in every state that I have seen across my 35 state study of criminal law um, cannot defend a homeless person because they are considered indigent and therefore they are considered basically non-human in terms of criminal law. All right. 
Thanks for the call. Really appreciate it. It was an interesting, uh, you know, conversation about. I, I I enjoy telling. I mean, I'm gonna. I gotta clip that part of that midterm election uh, stream because, I mean, you know, it's it's not shocking, but it's still very uh, interesting to hear them just say that outright. Like to call to call another human being blight. I mean, I, I don't understand how that's even like a conservative ideal. Like we just just, I mean. That, I mean, I mean, it is now, but in terms of like old, the old school Republicans that like we hear about that I didn't exist in my lifetime or whatever, um, I I don't I don't I don't I don't get get where where that comes from. Just like it's very bizarre. Well, if, language, bizarre. Language. If you want to talk about the uh, the state implications of January sixth uh, in terms of criminal law, I am I am definitely down to talk about that because there are many laws that were violated there well i mean um, the well specifically i'm sure the breaking into the <laughs> yeah the uh, capitol building i mean that's the that's like a, that's actually federal law yeah that's, which i am not i am not common with in my in my like that's experience a, that's, but that's a big everything one. that was committed outside of the building too everything that was committed outside of the building outside of breaking the federal law that is still state law um, type of stuff that was broken and it's not necessarily talked about and it's not necessarily juicy in terms of the eyes of the January 6th commission, you know? Right. Right. All right. Let me, um, let me, uh, there's some other people calling, let, we could have this discussion more the, the secondary discussion more in depth, uh, next time you call in, if that's cool, I want to get some other people cause we went long in the first half. And so we got a lot of callers too. So I want to try to uh, get a bunch of people in before I get too tired to keep streaming. Yeah, I'm sorry to take it away from the main point, but uh, I appreciate you having no, me no, on. No, you didn't, you didn't take it away from the main out. point at all. No, it's just uh, let's uh, let's uh, have that so we could go longer with the uh, other discussion. Let's let's have that next time you call in. You have a good one. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Bye. Bye. Uh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Charlie from Washington. How you doing? Hey, Charlie. What would you like to talk about? Uh, for, first of all, I want to say uh, you should ask Michael if you can clip that because it's it's kind of refreshing to watch a journalist just really go at somebody like that. Oh, I, I mean, mean I, I know I, it, it's it my show. I could certainly clip it. It's <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, he you he, he didn't look very like happy to be in that position. So you know, it's kind of polite I, yeah. to ask. For I, I, I I honestly really thought it but, went. Um, I, I, I do I do I do it a, I do things a little bit differently. Um, but he has a, we both have very different styles. Um, so I you know it was interesting to just hear how uh, you know what answers they had for everybody's questions there. Yeah, uh, no, it's which it's, weren't, it's weren't very you much know, a journalist much. go at it like that. Yeah. So, um, so and, what, what do you want to talk about? Um, I was watching Majority Report earlier today because I do that at work. Since I work in a metal shop and I have to wear headphones to protect my ears anyway, you know, just listen to podcasts all day. And uh, they played a clip. I think it was of, of I think it was of Matt Taibbi, but I could be mistaken. But he he was giving an interview and he he brought up like the left doesn't have any humor, and I just kind of oh, wanted to that is, I saw that clip <laughs> Taibbi on Ben Shapiro's show, right? I think so. Yeah. But like I, I find that kind of rich coming from uh, uh, people on the right because like conservatism is about upholding tra tradition and the status quo, i.e., old thoughts that other people came up with, and just sticking to that, and being in curious and not asking questions, it atrophies things like creative thinking and critical critical thinking and creativity, all of which you need in order to pull off jokes. That's why there are so many like failed Hollywood writers who are right-wing pundits right now is just they they don't have that exercise and thinking for themselves quite as much because you know they, it's tradition they they work before why isn't it working again you know right right I mean yeah they always the the, the uh age-old argument of uh they like to have about like George Carlin actually being a conservative or whatever um which is funny um and I mean, they, they, there you go. They make me laugh when they do that. I mean, yeah, the the the, the two genders, which is pretty much uh, every joke that they they throw out. But uh, to me, the the Ben Shapiro with Matt Taibbi clip, the interesting part to me wasn't even so much the humor thing. Um, the interesting thing to me was Taibbi saying how like young people are being 
um, you know, are, are attracted to conservatism. I mean, that's something you hear over and over again from them. I mean, if that's the case, why isn't that um, why isn't that bearing out in the elections that we have? It just doesn't it just doesn't happen. In fact, the midterm elections um, was uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure I read that it was uh, young people, the younger generation. I guess it would be Gen Gen Z now, who is the youngest generation yeah. who's of voting age. Um, Gen Z voted uh, for uh, you know Democrats more than you know I don't know if it was ever before, but it was something like crazy numbers, like um, you know more so than usual. In fact, it was enough where I saw a number of you know uh, these analysts saying that Gen Z might have even been the reason that the midterm elections went to the Democrats in so many races. Yeah, I believe that very much so. But I, I, I just think that's so weird, like, especially because, uh, you know, when, when they talk about like trans jokes as an example, what did they do? They were like, identify as a helicopter. I'm like, talk to actual trans people. There's so much funny about being a trans person. Like I'm watching all of this stuff talking about, uh, you know, gender neutral bathrooms and, and how all the scaremongering going on and on about that and you know calling for violence against trans people and the whole time i'm sitting there i'm thinking my doctor said estradiol is going to cause me to have to pee more <laughs> yeah if you can't see the hum- humor is a defense mechanism people who go through like dark shit have senses of humor to deal with that stress so like the funnier somebody is the more likely it is they have some some dark shit in their history you know Right, but like, and yeah. I, I, and you know, I I have kind of said about like, well, Dave Chappelle is a good example. Like he he had some smart bits back in the day. Like, what yeah, if the he internet? Doesn't, would... Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's just laziness on his part. Like, we oh, know well, that he's someone who is you know who has the um, the talent to be able to uh, be funny if he wants to. But he's, he's decided he to try to works. go this. It's also very weird. The Elon Musk thing was very bizarre. Like, all right, you want to bring Elon yeah. Musk out there? All right, whatever. You brought him out there. You saw the crowd's reaction. Why wouldn't you play off of that? Why would you try to stop that? A good comedian um, would have tried to play off that. They would have made jokes at Elon Musk's expense. Um, and if Elon Musk was actually a, a good sport and a true bringing back comedy, he would have taken them as jokes. I mean, but he, he he looked like he was sort of pissed that the crowd was booing Musk, too. It's weird. Why wouldn't you play? Like, it's the same thing like when you get heckled at a at a um, at a, a comedy show as you, as a comedian. You that, that, play that along with it. You, you go along with it. You you heckle back. You you, you make that person, um, you know, feel <laughs> you could really go at that person and own them. But um, yeah, it was just a bizarre reaction. I, I think the worst thing you could do to a comedian, like to really get under their skin, is just deadpan them the whole time. Don't laugh, just straight face, like you just, you know. Yeah. But yeah. like the the Dave Chappelle thing, like I think a lot of it is like he's not handling criticism very well, and he's getting angrier over it. And I think a lot of them are that way, and that's sad because like the chief purpose of comedy, you know, aside from being a defense mechanism, it's very often used for criticism. That's that's the point, you know, that's right. that's what the First Amendment is about, is protecting the ability to criticize the government, you know. All right. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks for the call. Uh, always a pleasure to, uh, to hear you call in. Uh, have a great night. Yeah, you too. Thanks, bud. Bye. Oh, I forgot to bring up. I saw that you're using video. I've got to bring up on the feed. Um, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. Uh, just a second. Hi, Matt. Uh, can you hey. hear me? I can. Who's this? Hi, this is Cameron Robson. I'm calling in from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. That's just north of Maine, to the east of Quebec, but not quite to Nova Scotia. <laughs> Cameron, can I bring your video up on the feed? Please do. It's I find that more comfortable <laughs> to be able to express myself um, through... Hey. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? What would you, what, would you, what would you like to talk about? Well, gosh, uh, there was something um, your 
Sorry, I feel... Just one second. Um... <laughs> okay. So your um, last caller was talking about, like... I did have something. Fuck, I had something. Uh, about, like... Not about something about, like, being funny or, like, uh, how to make jokes work. Uh, and I had something about that. All right, go ahead. But anyway, I the other, oh, the main thing I wanted to do uh, tell you about was like you were talking. I don't know what the fuck you guys were talking about. Like uh, I couldn't understand half of it. To be honest, I had it muted. I was watching something else. What were you uh, watching? Huh? What were oh, you watching? I was watching um, the. I was just rewatching uh, the Norm Macdonald show on. Um, uh, what do you call it? Can't snap my fingers. I'd be snapping my fingers right now if I could. I, I don't know what. I don't know what Netflix. Okay, I was about to say I don't know what crazy stations you got up there in Canada. No, we got Netflix, and then we have um, the Hudson's Bay Company station, and then the CBC. We got those three ones. Um, anyway, forget about that. That's not where I'm going with this. Um, you, I did notice that you were talking about the woke mind virus, and that's something that's been bothering me a lot too recently. And uh, I know that you're worried about it. Um, but in my independent research, I did come across some like other stuff like that maybe helps to explain. Um, have you ever heard of the gangster uh, computer god worldwide secret containment policy? No. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, well, the gangster computer god worldwide uh, secret containment policy made possible solely by worldwide computer god Frank, uh, Frankenstein controls, uh, especially belonging to the constant threshold brainwash radio. Um, it's, qu it's quiet and motionless. I can slightly hear it. Um, but repeatedly, this has saved my life on the streets. Now, 4 billion worldwide population, all living, have a computer god uh, containment policy brain bank brain a real brain in the brain bank and uh, cities on the far side of the moon uh, that we never see. Now, primarily based on your lifelong Frankenstein radio controls, especially your eyesight, TV, and sound recorded by your brain, and the moon brain of your Frankenstein computer god, that uh, it activates your uh, Frankenstein threshold brainwash radio propaganda, which even frightens you into mixing you up with the usual, you know, you don't worry about it. You know, you set it back in your mistakes, even when you've received deadly injuries. And this is the worldwide computer god secret containment policy. The worldwide, as a Frankenstein slave, usually at night, you go to the nearby hospital or camouflage miniature hospital van trucks. You strip naked, lie on the operating table, which slides into the seated computer god robot operant cabinet. Intravenous tubes are connected. The slimy, vicious Jew doctor simply pushes the starting button whoa, 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 based whoa, on your whoa, computer whoa, god brain whoa, 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 whoa. which records progress. <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, whoa, no, because I can say anti-Semitic. No, I can say anti-Semitic things. Why can you? Because it, you're the only one that's gonna get in trouble for it. No, <laughs> Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like, First of all, whoa, whoa, whoa! I won't have this. I won't have this, Kanye. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ca ca con ca cam ca con con con. I don't know how to turn Cameron into Camye. Excuse me, Camye. We'll not do this. We'll not do this. Apologize. Sorry. <laughs> Apologize. Sorry. Apologize. Listen, uh, if you don't think that they're capable of that, if you think well, that just, I, I want you to keep wrong. apologizing in your Canadian accent. That's why I'm pretending I can't hear you. Uh. <laughs> well, exactly. This is systematically the computer god operating cabinet has many robot arms with electrical, electrical laser beam knife robot arms with fly ITV cameras. 
uh, watching your whole body, every part of you is monitored, uh, even through your Frankenstein controls, synthetic blood, synthetic instant sealing, flesh and skin, even synthetic electrical heartbeat to keep you alive, or some kind of unbelievable computer god instant plastic surgery secrets. And Ka you are the Cam highest, Cameron, most intelligent Cameron, electrical said... machine in the... Wait, 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 no, wait. Continue. Cameron, can I just say that with those sunglasses on and in that light, you're looking. You're looking a little Nick Fuentes esque. I, I have never had sex with a woman because that Cause, would be gay. Because you're very Nick Fuentes esque. Okay. <laughs> well, inevitably, but that's because the gradualness. You, you know, like in a few years, you're made like stringy and thin, or grotesquely deformed, crippled and ugly, or even made over one foot shorter or one foot taller, as a computer god sees fit, virtually. All of the important instant plastic surgery is done to you inside the computer God-sealed robot operating cabinet. Even unbelievable, impossible plastic surgery operations, all vicious, impossible for dozens of vicious, coaster, bosher doctors working around the clock for weeks. The computer God-sealed robot arm operating cabinet has performed all of the above impossible plastic surgery operations overnight, even dwarfing you over a foot or increasing your height by two feet. What do you think about that? I think uh, I've heard everything there is to hear from Cameron today. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Cameron. <laughs> you can choose to believe these true facts or not, but I wouldn't recommend it. Have a great night, Cameron. Call me next time you call and give me an update on the uh, the crypto mining uh, stuff. I, I, what? I no, think that, that never happened. I was lying about all of that. <laughs> okay, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Cameron, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit off the walls there. On that one. Um. Oh, hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, man, Tony from Texas. Hey, Tony from Texas. How you doing? What would you like to talk about? Oh, I'll keep it short. First, I, I gotta say thank you so much for this show tonight. Holy cow! I was absolutely broken, broken with laughter. Like, and you know, thank you so much to Michael and Hannah for, you know, the work they do, for coming on the show, and for putting up with <laughs> Lucian and Nathan. Like, Oh, and I just want to say, and thank you to Lucian and Nathan for calling in and, and, and being willing to talk. I, uh, yeah, that's what I would, I mean, that's what I would like the show to be more like. I want the show to be impromptu like that. Like, that's, that's the vision for, like... You know, Sam Cedar's Majority Report is a much bigger show, obviously. And he's got the libertarian callers calling in. He's got the right wingers calling in. And he loves those calls. This, this is, this is, I'm a, you know, different time. Uh, I'm on a very different time, much smaller channel. But that's, that's what I want. I want anyone to call in. And I will, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, um, we, we can go at it. Uh, that's whoever you are. You call into the show and, I mean, I I'll take your call as I, long as time permits me I, to get to your call, and I'm not tired as I, we approach midnight. Yeah, that's I I, I do have, I do have to say a, a special thanks, and like I got I got to prop Michael up on this one because like I could, like sometimes like I have to pause and like really step away and take a break and kind of chunk up your conversations with folks like i never sat down and watched all of your things with michael tracy and like i i didn't get all the way through like the your appearance on like lauren chin show because i i like, totally understand that <laughs> it's it's a lot like i i i also have michael's like aversion to like all that bullshit but seeing him struggling with that during those conversations made it a little easier to sit there and grit through it. Cause I was like, hi, ah, yeah, I see, I see, I see what I'm feeling on your face. And I appreciate that. Um, and how, how mad is Nathan at Lucian right now? Like gotta be just absolutely livid. Maybe. That I don't know. I don't think, I don't think they, uh, you know, I don't think, uh, you know, his answers, I, uh, didn't think were great, but maybe they did. I mean, well, that didn't. Their answers didn't exist. They didn't. They didn't well, answer. There were. There were. There were. There were responses to the questions. We can clarify and yes, we can call them answers or not. 
I mean, I again, I, I, my, my, my position on these things is let, 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 you know, ask the questions, let them speak, let them embarrass themselves. Um, you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna get, you're gonna get something. I know that's not, I know sometimes that obviously takes a long time to do. That's why my streams, uh, usually go long, and I understand, I completely understand if not everyone has the tolerance for that. Um, I also enjoyed Michael's uh, approach as well. To be quite, uh, yeah. to, uh, no, you know. Uh, I would, I would really, I would really love to see, um, maybe the, like, like, I know, like, whenever, whenever there's those, like, kind of group discussion, you know, two, two lefties with two, you know, centrist or hacks or right wing grifters or whatever, like, I would really love to see you and Michael, like, tag team and on some, some conversations with, uh, with some people, because I think, I think the two of you, um, uh, bounce bounce really well off of each other and like you know him him asking these like more pointed questions you know kind of, kind of a good cop bad cop dynamic that goes on and like I think, yeah, I think sure. it works really well listen um, I'm, I'm always willing to talk to any uh anyone like i said i mean I, I don't know how else to make it clear i mean i would have been happy for ashley st Clair to call in i've been happy for uh that other dude to call in, I can't remember his name. Uh, he was another person. Raheem, was I, at... I, 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 I dropped the hammer on him because he was he was talking too much shit without backing it up, uh, and and starting to get into some really uh, dicey dicey verbiage. Um, and uh, so I, I like uh, if if you if you want to see see that handle in live chat again, you'll you'll have to go in to fix that because I can't. Oh, un- okay. Un- I, 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 I can't, I, I can't I, un- I, hammer the hammers I dropped. I got um, I and I will do that cuz I you know I like I've said it before I mean obviously if someone is uh ruining the live chat experience by not having a discussion and just trying to disrupt then that's that's my rules honestly I don't even yeah. I don't mind right wingers in there if they're you know yeah, just no, trying I to, try to ruin the experience you know if they're actually trying to I, I, engage that's fine I try to I try yeah I try I try to let you know there's some even if they're fucking annoying the shit out of me, if they're not being disruptive, disruptive, then I'll leave them alone. Um, so I mean, that's um, the whole um, that's the whole point, right? I mean, that's what what yeah. we should be is if if this if this is a discussion that you actually want to have. I mean, you could be yeah. you could be silly if you want. You could be trollish, I guess. If you're, but as long as you're not like just like uh, throwing you know throwing everyone else's uh, comments out of the. The chat because you're just dropping, uh, you know, nonstop stuff to just like make the chat move and just nothing's yeah. there. Um, uh, then that's no last, fun. last request and then I'll bounce. Um, please, uh, please, please send a uh, a message to the rest of the left leftist mafia uh, and uh, just just be like, hey, hey, y'all feel free to clip up and discuss what went down on my on my. My Tuesday Night Doom show, because uh, I really, I really want to see uh, David oh, and Mike to and Lance yes. and them and them them cover it and talking about tonight on their streams, because I think it would be really worthwhile, and uh, other people should see this. All right, all right, sounds good, Tony. Thanks a lot. Always a pleasure to talk with you, and thank you for your thank you for your moderation duties. You're welcome. Have a great night, everybody. All right, uh, let's take, uh, this might be the last call tonight. Let's take this and see. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, hi, uh, I'm Luisa. Can you listen to me correctly? Uh, I can hear you, yeah. Uh, what's yeah. your name? Where you, call- you said your name's Louise. Where are you calling from? I'm from Peru. Oh, Louise from Peru. Oh, you're, uh, you're Renee's friend who he said was going to call in, right? Yeah, he told me about your stream, so I can take about talk about my point, well, and my little view about what is happening here about the beach. That, that course. would be fantastic. Let's um, let's let's hear. So for so for people who are unaware, give me like the quick um, summary of what the hell is going on in Peru right now. Start at the beginning with uh, uh, Castillo is his name, right? The 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 former president of Peru. Um, Tell me yep. what happened with him and what he wanted to do, why he's not president anymore, and like a quick, like, you know, summarized version of events. Okay, so uh, I have to be clear, I'm not a politician, I'm not, I'm not an expert, so I, I just... Uh, You're an everyday people. Peruvian, that's what we, we want to hear from, that's what we want to okay. hear from, right. Yeah, uh, well, 
we have to think into account that Castillo was elected president uh, last year. So um, after a really uh, close match with a really right wing uh, uh, candidate that was uh, the daughter of uh, Alberto Fujimori, that he was uh, the dictator in the 90s. So he had a, da a daughter, uh, Keiko. So she candidated and she lost. And to be completely honest, that's where everything started because because she even though she lo she lost the, the the elections you know because Castillo got elected uh, in the parliament most of the congressmen were from her party so it was like a close fight between the the president and the congress every day uh, mostly. Um, the Congress were trying every day to call him names, to call him uh, he was a terrorist because in some kind of way he was left-leaning, I think, because uh, uh, to be fair, he, he uh, was invited in his party, uh, Peru Libre. So that party is completely left-leaning, but he wasn't one of the founding members, so he, he isn't like completely left-leaning, but in the party was. So we have that scenario. But in that context, uh, well, everything started last year. You no, know? every every day we saw the news. We even if, even the news were uh, like kind of against Castillo, but not completely open about it. You not know, like every media that is that is bought by some party in kind of way, like Fox News, but not that uh, blatant about it. You no. Know? So, well, time hap, time passed, time passed, people, um, the society here were completely divided, you know, in favor or against Castillo, you no, know? and things get, uh, started to go more and more uh, spicy here in the capital. So, time passed, uh, months passes, and things uh, were kind of strange because the Congress uh, time by time, tried to impeach Castillo in some kind of way. They tried to get like 87 votes uh, from congressmen to take out him, but they didn't reach it uh, every time they tried it. But this last time, it was kind of some kind of way they're going to reach that kind, that kind of votes, but we didn't know for sure. But it, Maybe that's kind of a rumor. It's not confirmed. It's it, it, that Castillo knew he, the Congress it, were going to reach the number of votes to take him out. But where we didn't, we we I, we are not sure at all. You know, it's just a rumor. But in that moment, when the votes are going to be uh, shown to the press, to the news, you no, know, to everyone to know the Congress reached the 87 votes, uh, Castillo in the night of a day before a holiday, <laughs> uh, uh, well, make a press conference and talk about to close the Congress because they tried to take him out and uh, declare, a, like, I don't know how to say in English, uh, emergency state where- Okay, right, uh, yep, state of emergency, right, yep. Exactly, and everything was going to be closed and stuff like stuff like that. But when that happened, uh, he had to take the, the support from the military and the policemen, to be fair, because to close, to, to make a state of emergency, you have to have the support to enforce it. Uh, he didn't have it. So when everything came down, so the, the military uh, was against him, of course, the Congress was against him, and obviously in, at that moment, uh, they took the 87 votes to take him out, and everything started to fall over. So he and his family flew away from the palace of government, and uh, well, of course, the vice president, that, that is right now Dina Boluarte, uh, replaced him, you no. Know? to try to calm things down, but to be fair, weeks has passed and things are just got really worse because uh, we have a really, um, how to say it, uh, different 
climate, political climate between the capital here in Lima and all the rest of the country. Sadly, the centralism is not over, it's even way, way worse than it was decades before. So like you can be happy here, going to tourism, going to everyday life here in Lima, but in the rest of the country, things are really, really bad. Uh, everything started in the south of the country. You know, the departments were a similar of states in the United States, but we, we divide the country in departments. So this Cusco, Arequipa, the south of the country, start to revolt. It start to uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, uprisings, a lot of march uh, in favor of Castillo in some kind of way. But the main uh, speech on this is first. Um, dissolve the Congress, because I, I have to be completely honest, the Congress was, it's not every fair, they, they had a lot of people with um, really, really sketchy backgrounds, with connections with mafias, with mobs. Oh, that's, with, oh, with, that's politics, baby, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And as I said before, most of them are from right wing, so you combine two factors, and, well, it's just uh, and I have to be honest also, every day I wake up and so I see the news, I'm always stressed. <laughs> I can't sleep correctly. And I think a lot of people, mostly I, I, as I am of left leaning, are always stressed, always angry because of that kind of stuff. No? Right. But well, apart from that, um, um, the South start uprising, start revolting against what happened with the Congress. This, this is the more, so, this is like the more, more like rural and working class areas of uh, exactly. Peru, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So the people, because even though Castillo isn't perfect, uh, I am, I am not uh, like I vote him, but I am not, no, I can't, I can't say correctly that he wasn't uh, connected with some kind of sketchy things. Well, I, I can say that if he wasn't so, but that's me. I'm from Lima. I'm from the, the capital. But when you ask someone from the mountains, they don't care. They just felt represented by him because he has an image of a rural professor that got elected. That never happened. Right. And for people, if pe for people who don't recall, his whole thing was... Uh... Like when uh, Castillo was running, his whole thing, like his party was like, his whole thing was like the pencil, right? Like he really put himself yeah, forward exactly. as like, as like a working class, uh, you know, educational uh, educator, I should say. Um, yeah. He, he immediately, um, you know, became like a representative for like the, the rural and indigenous people in Peru. Um, they immediately supported him and there was, I remember he, he, he wore the hat too. He wore like the, yeah. uh, like the classic, like, um, uh, you know, like the, the traditional Peruvian style, like hat from that they the wear mountains. from the, yeah, the highlands, mountain, the mountainous regions. Right, right, right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, but at the same time, um, uh, I think the south of the, the country and, Another thing to have to, to take into account that the South is filled with mining explorations. And you know how mining affects the, the, the environment and all the close villages that are nearby. There is always a hot climate against the mine. They are always in favor from some representation in some kind of way. No? Uh, but yeah. Castillo is was like a, her her representative in the politics by now, but well. So the first thing the people are asking here in this uprising is to dissolve the Congress because they blame them for everything has happened until now. No, that's that's the first thing they ask. Second thing is to um, I how to say it uh, to make a new constitution because uh, the, 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 the current constitution was was uh, promulgated in, a, in, a, in the era of the dictatorship from uh, Alberto Fujimori. He dissolved the Congress in that time and he uh, um, made a new constitution in that moment, but that constitution like really favored him and a lot of private companies, like, like really, really big companies, no? Because, well, 
I have to admit before him, the, a lot of companies were state-based, you know, and weren't really efficient at all. Uh, there was a lot of corruption, but did, did this only uh, transform the problem from state companies to private companies that are also corrupt and really they don't uh, they don't uh, take themselves account uh, with all of this. Um, they they think no, we are a free market. We can do what we want because there's this is a free country and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. No, but well, the the main speeches of the people that are rising are Congress gone and new constitution. Apart from that, there is some people that want Castillo to be again again a president, but that's really hard to make because the law is kind of against him. So I don't think that that's going to happen. But I think that the, what I'm right now really, really angry about is the answer from the, the, the military and the now government of the current, well, current, current president, former vice president, Dina Boluarte. She immediately take out all the military, all the police that are shooting against people. There are seven people dead. I don't know if there are more people that even and some childs are dead from 15, 14 years old that were shot by the police. There was a, yeah, there was a I, th that's hard. That's, that's absolutely, uh, they didn't, they didn't uh, th this sounds all obvious, obviously very reminiscent of the coup that happened in Bolivia a couple of years ago. Um, similar, yeah. yeah. Um, I saw this video. I don't know if you could go if if you've seen it or you heard about it. I saw this video that was going it was going viral here in the in the you know in the U.S. at least. Maybe maybe it's also been viral down in Peru, um, of protesters trading a police officer that they allegedly captured, like doing like a a, a trade off. Like they they said, here's the police officer. Now give us the. Uh, the protester you arrested and they did a trade did you see this yeah, that happened that happened yeah that's, that's incredible uh, i have to i have to admit that by now uh things are really worse there is oh. a lot of uh, violence right now and i have to admit also that most of the uprising is not organized enough there is that's some always point... the, that's that's always going to happen unfortunately when it comes to yeah i mean especially that's, if if it's the the uprising versus the police, like you you can't. It's yeah. It's you have to do it in numbers, not uh not like you know. It's not going to be purely strategy. It's got to be sheer numbers. At least if this in the short term, maybe if this goes longer, which would obviously be bad. But maybe as it goes yeah. on, there would be more of a you know more of an organized effort. But yeah. Yeah, for me, I I just want people to fulfill their their wishes because I also want a new constitution. I also want the Congress to be gone because from inside that institution there was, are was there was there when 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 you say Congress gone like there was gonna be um like it was gonna basically just boot everybody out and start fresh or like what was the like like have new elections yeah. for all of Congress. A new elections for own Congress also, but that that's the hard part because we want a new constitution and well the liberals want some reforms in the current constitution, but we want a new one because this constitution allows a lot of people that have sketchy backgrounds to pass, to be elected in these institutions. You know, if if we new, we make new elections. A lot of people related with the current Congress will going to be elected, so everything will be the same. So nothing will change. So I, I am not so in favor about new elections right now before and uh, without a new constitution. Right. So well, yeah, and, and to be to be completely honest, I only want to the people to be here because here in Peru, even though we are mainly and well also seen outside as, a, an, as an Indian, as an indigenous country, but there is a lot of racism here, a lot of cla a lot of class, class hatred also from people here in Lima, in the capital that had uh, have a lot of uh, the upper class, of course, as always, you know that they think about the people outside the, the, um, the city as uh, second class people. I remember there was a president 
a really, really infamous president in the 2006-2011 period, the who was Alan Garcia. The, in the jungle, it was uh, also a protest against uh, a, a mining company. I don't remember correctly, but he say explicitly, they, those are third class people. They don't deserve rights, et cetera, et cetera. In, in, in the media, I, I don't understand how that, that guy wasn't arrested at that time, but well, I remember also the police are, are with him, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I know a little bit because my half my family um, is is Peruvian. I, I'm not Peruvian, so it's, it's, you know, it's the half I, I married into. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I hear from them. You know, I, I think uh, when it comes down to it, I mean, you'll uh, know. Uh, any president is going to probably look um, uh, not so bad in Peru when compared to uh, Fujimori. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> that's probably how yeah, he got yeah. away with it. You know, because, uh, yeah. uh, oh, you know, Fujimori has the uh, distinction of spending time in jail for crimes against humanity for what he did. Exactly. That, I, I want to make another point. Sadly, here, the left is kind of uh, satanized view of the main evil because in the 90s, uh, well, uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s, there was, I have to be completely honest, I, I am a left-leaning person, but I, I recognize Sendero Luminoso Lightning Path as a terrorist organization because uh, I know there are people in the United States, in, some, in the first world that kind of uh, Take uh, Gonzalo Abimael Guzman as a good person, but he wasn't. I we have you, you, everything. Everyone has to know that he also organized attacks against farmers, against dealers. Also, at the same time as the the police enforcement did, of course. But both were criminals. The president Fujimori and Abimael Guzman were, were both were criminals. The, the correct term uh, used here is an um, intern. Uh, armed conflict, you know, because it was like a war between forces and the people in between, you know, were the, the main victims over here. But thanks to that scenario, um, a lot of people right now fear the, everything related to the left, because when you uh, try to speak with, I don't know, uh, some kind of theory, some kind of, of terms that are used in left-leaning theory, they called you a terrorist just by now, just by that, just only speaking like that. You have to explain, you have to uh, try to, to be clear that you are against that because if not, you're talking about, uh, as a terrorist, you, you have to be in prison, et cetera, et cetera. That's usual, that, that's the practice that we left-leaning people call terruqueo because from terrorists, you, you are taken as a terrorist just to, to, for speaking like a left-leaning person. So, right, because uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm, I did an episode on uh, this group uh, before. Um, obviously, things are different now, but uh, the history with uh, Shining Path uh, probably mm -hmm. you know painted the left in a not so great light in Peru in ways that I think your the neighboring countries like Peru views leftists different than the your neighbors like leftism is pretty healthy and alive in your you know in in Bolivia uh, Chile Argentina uh, you know we're seeing it now and right whereas Peru has always been more right wing and I think that's because of the history with uh, the shining path would that would that would that be a correct assessment from you as well correctly that's absolutely correct uh i'm study in the san marcos university the most known university here in peru and also the university has a, like a dark past because of that no when it, there is like an inside joke be, between peruvians like when you when you say oh, oh i'm studying in san marcos ah, are you a terrorist <laughs> like a some kind of joke so yeah, it's like so engraved inside Peruvian culture that it is hard to be left-leaning like this, really hard, because you you have to you can say you're a communist because automatically people think you're a terrorist. Even though, in that moment when Shining Path were really rising up, they executed a lot of people of the Communist Party here in Peru, because 
Shining Path were, weren't all the Communist Party. The Communist Party, the PCP, uh, were, had a lot of branches. One of them succeed that was Shining Path, and they consider everything, everyone else as revisionists and start to kill them. There were like 10 to 12 people from the Communist Party that were executed by the path. So there, there was that. But right now, thanks to that, uh, that, that rhetoric, that discourse, it's really hard because as you say, Peru politics are, is really dominated by the right wing. It's uh, you you can you can speak some liberal things like LGBT policies, something against racism, like that something like liberal right wings right wingers can agree with. Go against poverty issues, against class problems, and you are discarded in the political discourse. So it's yeah, it's really a, a deep structural problem here that when you take into account what is happening right now in the South, what do you think? People in Lima are calling those people terrorists just by uprising. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Luis, this was a really great call. Very interesting to hear. Um, uh, would, would you be interested in calling back in again to uh, give us updates? Oh, of course. Well, I have to organize my times <laughs> because, well, here. Oh, right. Also... This is not the normal time. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, definitely. Let's um, let's uh, uh, unless there's anything else you want to add, please do. Um, let's definitely. Yes. Uh, I'll get your contact info from Renee, and we'll work out like having you on uh, to get updates as things progress there. Because I, I, I hope course, things get solved soon. But it seems like this might be something that that lasts for a. Uh, at least a, a, a little while longer. Yeah, but I only want my, my I, to close things up, close things up, I just want to people stop being killed because yes. the, yeah, that's my, my main, my main request because I, I was horrified by when young people, younger than me, were killed just to be there by this, you know, and what is terrible in those uh, really far away village? You have a, a, an hospital like hours in in, uh, in in an ambulance to get there. There isn't any service to help those those kids, so they die because of that. You no, know? right. the country is. It, it, I I I want to to close everything because to say uh, like. A part of a poem that was said in, in the election period that Lima is not all Peru, of course. Peru is not Lima. And also, we have to forget, we have to uh, stop forgetting about, about nobodies, the nobodies that live outside the, the capital. The, uh, that's uh, the nadies, as uh, they say in a, in a poem, because they always are forgotten in, in everything, in every policy, in every in everything that comes up outside Lima. So, yeah, that will I want to close up with that. Thanks so much for the call, Louise, and I will reach out to Renee to get your contact. Um, have a great night. Take care. Igualmente. <laughs> Take care. That was very interesting. I, I I've been I want to have a whole episode on it. Honestly, get more um more in depth too. Um, that was a great summary of what's going on and the 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 background there. Uh, thanks so much, Louise, and thank you, Renee, for hooking it up. Um, the show is now over three hours long, so I think that was going to be the last call. Um, I know there's people who want to call in. We'll have to we'll have to wait till uh, next episode. Um, I have some super chats I need to read, and then that's the call, um, and that's the show. Excuse me. Uh, let's go to super chats here. Da, 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 da. Uh, Renee with a bunch of super chats. I'll read all Renee's first. Who was there at the? This was talking about the Republican Club event. Who is there at the den of scum and villainy? Trolls in the chat be villains from trading places. Uh, Lucian's the blood boy, says Renee. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, Ezekiel Mordecai with a $25 super chat. Thank you so much, my friend. We're all doomed. Uh, Midnight Pizza Mon with a super chat. Uh, Matt, it's probably true that this is the amusing and that it, Matt, it's provably true that this is amusing and worthy of this super chat. Thank you. Yes, it was a very amusing episode. Uh, Cameron Robson of the Super Chat. Matt lives in L.A., not New York. Hollywood Binder. <laughs> uh, Dirt Devil with the Super Chat. Will they invite AOC or Bernie Sanders to speak? That's a good question. Um, Nick Mauer with the Super Chat. Uh, $10 Super Chat. These guys' answers aren't even worth listening to. Their slippery reaction to carefully worded questions tells the whole story. Well, yeah, that's why you got to let them answer it. Um, Estelle Winslow with a $10 Super Chat. Have you seen the incident at the Game Awards with the Groiper that went up on stage and dedicated his award to his reformed Orthodox rabbi, Bill Clinton? FYI, my name is Thirsting Howell III. Um, I did see that clip. The kid was on InfoWars a couple of years ago when there was the whole thing in Hong Kong going on, and he seemed legitimately interested in what was going on in Hong Kong. Like, he went on InfoWars and Alex Jones, not Alex Jones, uh, the other guy, Owen, was trying to, uh, uh, that's his name, right? Was trying to um, ask him U.S.-related questions, and the kid kept taking it back to the issue when, you know, free Hong Kong or or whatever um, he was trying to, you know, focus on. Um, that, I, I don't know what his current trajectory is. Was he just a troll, a, a groiper? I, I, I didn't see any more than that InfoWars thing where he seemed like a kid with a legit, uh, interest in uh, activism for Hong Kong. Um, let's go to the Twitch channel and see what's, what's there. Um, Don James, uh, cheered 200 bits. You're one hell of a moderator, Matt. You're so good at that. Thank you. Tokyo Hans, resubscribe with Prime, subscriber for seven months. Thank you, Tokyo Hans. Amused Mom, uh, excuse me, Amused Mob, resubscribe with Prime, subscriber for eight months. Thank you so much. Um, Apocalypse Dream Team, subscribe with Prime. Thank you so much. Um, Let's go to... I think that's it. I think that's it. That is the show, folks. Um, If you got to call in, thank you for your call. If you tried to call in and didn't get to it, I take the calls as they come in. Um, If you have something very specific that you want to talk about that you think would be of interest, I urge you to DM me or reach out to me. Uh... Uh, before the show or, or even during the show, if it's early enough um, to let me know what the topic is that you want to call or whatever it is you want to call in about. And if I agree that it deserves a, uh, a bump, I, I will get to you. Uh, if you are calling in for a debate, that's an automatic bump. Um, but otherwise I just take the calls as they call in, they come in. There's, you know, um, so, uh, Oh, who should I rate on Twitch by the way? Um, who should I, let's see who's on Twitch right now. Um, oh, Amy, Amy EC3 is on. Let me, let me raid Amy. I haven't raided Amy in a long time. Um, all right, folks. I, I, this, this episode is exactly how I want the show to be. Amazing interview with two great guests. An impromptu, out of blue, right wing call in debate, and then uh, amazing calls, and capping it all off with a first hand account from someone in Peru, a Peru, a real, a real deal Peruvian citizen, breaking down what's currently going on in his country. I mean, this is, this is, this is, chef's kiss type show. Um, all right, let me, I'll open a raid, uh, Amy on, uh, Twitch and for everyone else, uh, I will see you on Thursday, majority report Thursday, um, leftist mafia. Um, I then will also see you scam economy, uh, on the weekend and then next Tuesday with, um, Emma Vigland for another episode of doomed. Have a great night, everyone. See you 
See you around.